victory. The home of Manitoba's government is quiet tonight. Soon these halls will be filled with the province's 42nd assembly. But who will lead that group and the province? Tonight, we find out. On September 10th, 2019, in the upcoming provincial election. And with that, the stage was set. For the 42nd time in Manitoba history, the people have the opportunity to decide the future of our province. Brian Pallister challenged by fresh faces. With Wab Canoe now leading the NDP. I'm running to be your next premier so that we can fix health care. And Dougald Lamont with the Liberals. There are people who are not happy with what happened with the, the Pallister PCs. Promises have been made. More jobs and less debt. Back onto being a province for all of us. Predictable, stable funding. We've got to roll back the changes that were done. And through it all, we listen to you. This is not an isolated situation. This has happened to other people. I would definitely link the robberies that we've seen to just fast cash for drugs. Licensed practical nurses working whose jobs were totally eliminated. Will Manitobans stay the course with the progressive conservatives or is new leadership needed? This is Decision Manitoba. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Decision Manitoba 2019. This is your provincial election headquarters. Global News and 680 CJOB are teaming up for extensive coverage tonight, bringing you election results when they happen, along with analysis of what the future holds for Manitoba. Our team of reporters is positioned at the leaders' headquarters. We'll be hearing from them throughout the night. Global's Brittany Greenslate is standing by with the Progressive Conservatives. Kevin Hirschfield is keeping his eye on the NDP. Global's Joe Scarpelli is watching the Liberal camp tonight. And Amber McGookin is with the Green Party in the Wolseley riding as they look for their first seat ever in Manitoba tonight. Now the polls have just closed and as soon as data becomes available to us, we'll be bringing it to you. If you're watching on TV, you'll notice to the right of the screen results from individual ridings will cycle through. We also have a running seat count. It will show you the total number of seats a party is either leading or elected in. And remember, each party is hoping to get to 29 seats, the number needed for a majority. Now, for those of you listening on radio, or if you'd like to follow online tonight, you can head over to globalnews.ca slash Winnipeg for results and a live stream of this broadcast. Now, as the numbers begin to reveal themselves this evening, we'll be bringing you commentary of what it all means. And for that, I'd like to welcome 680 CGOB's Richard Cluche and Global News Chief Political Correspondent David Aiken to the show. Gentlemen, let's begin by talking about the big picture. Well, the big picture is Brian Pallister has 40 Last time around in 2016, 40 of 57 seats. Now, with health care being a key part of this general election, will he be able to keep that 40? And what does that mean for the other parties here, David? The NDP are trying to build on 12 seats from last time around. That's right. This is a really interesting election in that there are four parties that could all say mission accomplished at the end of the night. And let's take a look. The PCs want to hold the majority, but they could lose 10 seats and still have a majority. That's the PCs mission accomplished. Uh, Wab Canoe and the NDP get to 12, 16, 18 seats. That's mission accomplished. Uh, Dougal Lamont's Liberals, they want to hold official party status. That's mission accomplished. And for the Green Party of Manitoba, never ever won a seat before. For. Maybe tonight's the night. I think they've got a chance, and that would be mission accomplished for that party. So, Lisa, there's lots of stories within the stories that we're going to be tracking this evening. You bet. All right. We're also joined by Global Senior Current Affairs reporter Eric Sorensen. He's helping keep an eye on those key ridings and the entire province. Eric. Lisa, if Brian Pallister has one advantage this election night, it is Manitoba's own history, the disposition of Manitobans to elect a government and then re-elect it a second time. In the 99-year history of the Manitoba Legislature building, only the government of Sterling Lyon in 1981 did not get a second mandate. That history and the will of Manitobans will be tested once more tonight. I'm not aware of any rift in the Conservative Party. Nor For over 60 years, only the Conservatives and New Democrats have governed Manitoba. 
conservative Premier Duff Roblin won four elections. Then Ed Schreier ushered in the very first NDP government for two terms. A pattern unique to Manitoba was established, a battle of left and right with ample time for each to govern. There's also the north-south divide. Conservatives have won consistently in the rich farmland of southern Manitoba, while the NDP has usually won in the less populated mining and indigenous communities in the north. In Winnipeg, New Democrats have won primarily from the city core to the north to the east side. The Conservatives have often won the neighborhoods in Winnipeg's south and west. The battleground to form government often decided by ridings that swing between north and south, left and right, and when Manitobans are ready for change. And so, New Democrat Howard Pauley won two elections. Then Gary Philman won three for the Conservatives. Then the NDP came back to win four times, three with Gary Doerr and one with Greg Selinger. And that brings us to 2016. The electoral map went massively blue. And Premier Brian Pallister hopes Manitobans will do what they've done so often, give a first-time government a second term. So, Brian Pallister enters this election night with a little history on his side. Now, history also suggests the main challenge will come from Wab Canoe and the NDP. Though Dugald Lamont and the Liberals hope to change the course of Manitoba history, and the Greens hope to write a brand new chapter altogether. The results will begin to fill in our virtual legislature. The PCs in blue, with 38 seats at dissolution, are defending their place on the government benches. The New Democrats in orange have just 12 seats at dissolution. The bottom line for the Liberals in red, retain official party status with at least four seats, plus three other independents in gray. The total, 57. But on this night... The count starts at zero. The slate is wiped clean. 57 separate elections are underway. The counting just beginning for Manitoba's 42nd Legislative Assembly. Lisa? All right, thanks for that, Eric Sorensen. A wealth of history there. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that we do have zeros, zeros, zeros across the board. Nobody is leading or elected right now. And for those listening on CJB, watching at home, Trust us, we've got a pipeline to Elections Manitoba. The minute that they count a ballot, it's going to show up in our results at the bottom of our screen, and we'll be sure all night long. We're going to tell you if you're listening on the radio, online. Right now, nobody uh, is leading or elected anywhere in the province. It's still, what, uh, three minutes in. Yeah. yeah, we should have some results probably within the next 10 minutes. And one of the other things I'll be looking for tonight is that uh, voter turnout. Last time around, it was mm -hmm. 56%. A lot of people are saying I'll be, it'll be amazing if we get to 50%. All right, David Aiken, Richard Cluche, thanks for that. Now let's check in with our reporters. Again, they're stationed throughout Winnipeg tonight. Brittany Greenslade joins us from the PC Party headquarters. Brittany, the Tories hoping to retain that comfortable majority. What's the vibe down there tonight? Yeah, Lisa, a lot of nervous energy here at the Conservative Party headquarters. Now, the Tories won a majority government back in 2016, putting them in power for the first time in 17 years. Now, Brian Pallister kept his promise and lowered the PST in the first term, but he also brought in widespread health care reform. So, do Manitobans agree with those difficult decisions, or is it too much too fast? Tonight is the test. Can Pallister hold on to that majority government, and how many seats can he keep away from the NDP? That's where our Kevin Hirschfield is live tonight. Kevin. Well, the NDP is hoping for redemption tonight. It was three years ago when they were resoundingly booted out of power. Tonight, they come in with a new leader, Wab Canoe, and they're hoping to take back many of those seats that they lost in that 2016 Tory landslide. Now, Canoe has said it since the start of this campaign. Health care is the number one issue. He says the Tories' changes have been reckless. They've been too fast. Will Manitobans agree with him? We will find out very shortly. The Liberal Party also hoping to make major gains tonight. Let's send it to their headquarters now where Joe Scarpelli is. Joe? Kevin, thank you. Liberal leader Dougal DeMont believes his party is stronger and more organized than it's been in a generation. And tonight, the Liberals are trying to prove just that. But for... Um, one lost seat, and the Liberals are once again without official party status. Now let's check in with Amber McGookin covering the Green Party. Thanks, Joe. The Green Party is hoping to make history here tonight, getting their first seat ever in Manitoba. And Wolseley is where they're putting most of their hope here tonight. Last election, they were about 400 votes away from securing the seat. And the NDP incumbent is out. So they're thinking this could be their year. And polls are showing about one in ten of Manitobans say they would vote Green. So we'll see how they do here tonight. Back to you, Lisa. 
All right, thanks so that, so much for that, Amber Maguka. Now, Maguka, now we're going to take a look at a handful of ridings we're keeping a close eye on tonight, beginning with St. Boniface. David Aiken. Yeah, so I picked this riding. Why? Because voters in a by-election said they're going to do something different. This was Greg Selinger's riding, of course, and Dougal Lamont wanted in a by-election. I like ridings that could be up for change. All my friends in Steinbach, I'm sorry, I know what you're going to do tonight. You're going to elect a progressive conservative. Boring. St. Boniface, those voters there, they made some changes last time. So I'm looking at that. we got a liberal leader. Larissa Simpson, the Democrats, she'd be the other favorite, I think, if Lamont doesn't win. So we'll keep an eye on St. Boniface all night long. That's one of my key ridings. All right. We now have Wolseley, and this is where you saw the really tight Green Party race last election. That's right. So my NDP insiders are pretty confident that New Democrat Lisa Naylor is going to win here. But... I like the Green story. Greens are the official opposition in PEI. Greens won three ridings in New Brunswick. They won their first riding in Ontario. And Greens hold the balance of power in BC. Will Greens tonight, will Manitoba join that trend? Will the Greens win one at least tonight? Because if they do, I think it's going to be Wolseley. David Nickers is the Green candidate. And that's why I'm watching Wolseley tonight. Well, and I'm watching it too, but that riding is less granola than True. it used to be mm -hmm. because of redistribution. So Lisa Naylor, I still think, is the favor there for the NDP, but it'll be fascinating. Now, I have two ridings as well. In Winnipeg, St. Vital to me is key. If the NDP are going to make inroads on the health care issue, Jamie Moses, who has been knocking on doors for the past six months, with Nancy Allen, who used to have that riding for the NDP. Colleen Mayer is a cabinet minister, so she goes down. We'll find out early whether or not the NDP are making that comeback. That's a key Winnipeg riding for me. But I don't want to be accused of having perimeteritis. So let's go to <laughs> Dauphin out in the western part of Manitoba. This is a riding that the NDP need to retain if they're going to grow from 12. Uh, they lost it back in 2016. They need to get this one back. It used to be always solid NDP territory. Uh, so it's one of those ridings that if we find out early in, in the evening that the NDP are doing well and take that back, then suddenly I think the NDP are making a comeback. Is that a thing, perimeteritis? Can you really get that in this town? Okay. You can. I do have some <laughs> ointment for it. I think there's vaccinations. All right. All right. No numbers to report just yet, but stay with us. Still to come tonight, results, an election call, and reaction. This is Decision Manitoba 2019. The Brick's famous tent sale. Get up to 60% off clearance items in the tents. Plus, get this mountain sofa only $5.99. This velvet queen bed just $2.49. Exclusive English High Efficiency Laundry Team only $8.98. These plush velvet ottomans are just $69 each. Or this Samsung 55-inch 4K Smart TV only $5.99. Plus, find many more incredible deals throughout the store. Don't miss it. The Brick's famous tent sale. Saving you more. Sage Creek inspires you to expect more from the design of your community. Whether you're starting fresh, need more space, or are entering the next stage, Sage Creek builds on the idea of what makes a community truly livable, like walkability, appealing shops and services, and plenty of parks, playgrounds, and trails. It's a community that continues to attract new residents and break new ground each day. Learn more at sagecreek.ca. Have you not tried the Beyond Meat Burger yet? I haven't. All right, here you go. One for each of you. Mm, that's a good flavor. This is actually unbelievably good. Right now, they're just $3.99. Oh, that's a great deal. Now what's your excuse? I don't have one now. Yeah, you don't have an Especially excuse? Especially $3.99, I mean. The Big Spin. Scratch and win. You could join winners like Jim. Are you ready to see Jim spin the wheel? <laughs> Jim is walking away with no less than $100,000. Here it comes, but he could win $500,000. Will you be the next big spinner? Scratch, watch, spin, win. It's Leon's Customer Appreciation Event, our biggest sale of the year. Get amazing specials throughout the showroom, like 50% off this Collier Chase, now only $5.99. Plus, win free furniture in every store, and so much more. This weekend only.
Welcome back. We're going to chat a bit about the big topic this election, and that's health care. The Pallister government made some major changes. Lisa, we're still waiting for results, and the big changes here were in Winnipeg, in Battleground Winnipeg, in the north, in the northeast, and in the south. And really, if the NDP are going to make any inroads, David, it's going to be on that health care issue. Yeah, no, I think so. You mentioned that to me, you were talking about Dauphin as one of the NDP strongholds they have to snap back. Dauphin, Thompson, Brandon East, fine. Then there's three ridings right in Winnipeg that are affected by the ER closures that they could win. Radisson, McPhillips, Transcona. Those are right now PC ridings, and we could get uh, something coming up. First results. Now, along the bottom of the screen, and for our listeners, we're going to tell you we have leading and elected right now the Liberals showing one, Progressive Conservatives, NDP and Green Party all sitting at zero right now. In Borderland, the Liberal candidate Lauren Brawl showing 45% of the vote over Josh Gunter from the PC party. But right now, that's one out of 46 one polls. One poll, yeah. and this ain't going to be the way it finishes tonight, <laughs> I'll bet you, Loney. Absolutely. But in Borderland, world. Cliff Graydon is running as an independent after he was tossed out from the Progressive Conservative Caucus. This will be one that's interesting to watch throughout the evening. Yeah, I think the Conservatives or Progressive Conservatives are favored there. Cliff's an outside shot. Uh, if the Liberals win there, they're going to have a fabulous night all over the province, let me tell you that. All right, David Aiken, Richard Cloutier, thank you. Now, another part of our coverage tonight is our panel. That's being hosted by 680 CJOB's Julie Buckingham. Julie? Welcome inside the PC headquarters at the Canad Inns Polo Park. And on our panel, joined on my far left by my 680 CJOB colleague, Hal Anderson, former political or retired political scientist, <laughs> Shannon Sanford, and a one-time mayoral candidate, Hello. Jenny Motkaluk. And they'll be providing us some insight from what we've heard from listeners on the air, from their background as a politician and covering the politicians for many, many years. And this has been really a campaign that I think Hal and I have talked about on the air, that we've been concerned that there haven't been enough issues to really pull people to the polls, to the ballot box. Last time around, there was that appetite to really boot out the NDP. Do you think there was enough issues, Jenny, to really get people fired up? I think that was part of the strategy, Julie. You know, it's a classic front-runners campaign that was run by the PC Party Manitoba, and I think the results will play out in their favour. The truth is, I agree with you, I don't think there was, there were an awful lot of exciting issues to talk about. Obviously, healthcare is something that people are talking about, but let's face it, we have to do something to fix the health care in the problem. Yeah, Let's face it, it, ladies, it was a boring campaign. It was. And, it was and, all, and I think we're going to have whole hum results tonight. I don't think that was the big the big gamble of the NDP to make yeah. this a one party, a, a one uh, big issue. Mm -hmm. Health care, and he failed. They failed at it miserably, How did WAB fail at w this WAB campaign? failed by just focusing on health care, and I think he should have been much broader. He could have done the meth crisis. He could have done education. He could have been broader in, in A little more strategy. vision would, yeah. would have been very welcome from like my what, perspective. Jenny? You know, we talk a lot about how we're going to spend our money. We're going to spend mm. money on healthcare. We're going to spend money on, on education. I think that for me, I'm really looking for somebody to tell me how we're going to make some money, mm. right? How are we going to really, truly drive our economy in the province? Because let's face it, money is the thing that we need That's to do all of those great things. That's a typical conservative response Isn't to it? things, though. But I mean, the <laughs> NDP, if they were to be really sharp, yeah. should have stepped in, though, and talked about the, the meth crisis. And I think that, you know, if you're going to talk about it in the health care crisis, yeah. the meth crisis is the bigger driving but, point. But if you poll, man, we, we saw in the polling, though, that the only issue issue Manitoba that was really created about that was, was health care. I don't that believe was created. that. How? That was actually created. That was created by the NDP and by the unions. I think that was created. And I don't think, think it was real. You think that the, the union vote had a real impact on this campaign? I think the unions vote did have an impact. And I also think the fact that the unions were yeah. so busy fighting for the first themselves. two weeks fighting inside, yeah. inside themselves. Yeah. Is yeah. it possible that that was another part of a front-running sure. strategy? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And a summer election in Manitoba? Very smart, Mr. Pallister. So, Shannon, what do you think the strategy was behind the Pallister campaign to say at times we are working on health care we are pushing it forward and you then know, other times saying this was an NDP report that we are acting on. well you know he was very smart Mr. Pallister in a lot of ways he was very humble and very very clear that you know what maybe we did come in a little too fast but you know we're, we're willing to talk to you about how we could do it better at if you give us another mandate. That was smart of him to say, you know, maybe we did a little too quick. We're, we're ready to kind of 
come yeah. back on it. We're going to pause the panel That's right, right there, and uh, we'll keep coming back to you throughout the evening for Sounds our good. thoughts. Let's throw it back to the desk. Sounds good. All right, Julie Buckingham, thank you. Right now, leading and elected, the progressive conservatives are showing four, the NDP two, the Liberal and Green Party still at zero right now. Let's check in on some of our early results. Key word early, three out of 46 polls reporting in borderland. Josh Gunter, the PC candidate with 29% of the vote. Moving on now to Lakeside. We'll see what the numbers are looking like there. Again, it's very early in the evening. One poll reporting there where Ralph Eichler, the PC incumbent, is showing the lead with 57% of the vote to the NDP candidates, 32%. In St. Vital now, I know, Richard, you wanted to talk a bit about this riding. Jamie Moses in the lead right now over the Liberal candidate. But again, only one out of 42 polls reporting. But if the NDP are to make inroads tonight, they need to take this riding back. So far, 40%, uh, 47% of the votes in St. Vital for the NDP. And the night is kind of turning out a little bit the way it should be. PC's out to a lead 7 over the NDP too. All right, and a quick look at the Pa Kamisak. Again, two out of 54 polls reporting. Amanda Lathlin, 86% of the vote, the NDP incumbent there over the PC's Ron Evans. And I should point out, in all the polls that are reporting so far, all the incumbents are pretty much holding, except in St. Vital. That right now is the only pickup of the night. It's an ND pickup, NDP pickup over the Conservatives. All right, we're going to toss it over to Eric Sorensen now with a quick tour of our electoral map. Eric, over to you. Lisa, the map is beginning to fill in and it is looking interesting as every election does. For example, the NDP, if it's going to make a comeback, would expect that they could take back Thompson. But for the moment, they're not. Let's have a look at that board and uh, see what is going on in Thompson, Manitoba. And you can see that Kelly Bindle has a, a, a narrow lead over Danielle Adams again. For the NDP, this is a must-take back if they are actually going to challenge on the evening. Looking at that map again, uh, we can see that there are some writings filling in. There's the Paul Kamisak is going to the NDP for the moment, but uh, Swan River, Riding Mountain, both going conservative. There's Borderland. Remember earlier we were talking about it being liberal. That was momentary, and that may have only been be the only time it goes that way. Now, of course, we want to go in and look at Winnipeg. Winnipeg has the most ridings in the province. It has the most swing ridings. It is where these elections are usually decided. Uh, you can see right there, San Vitel. That's what David was talking about. It is the one riding so far that looks like it might be a takeaway inside the city of Winnipeg. And that is uh, Kildonan River East, I believe. That would be expected to be a hold for the Conservatives. Uh, back to you, Lisa. All right, Eric Sorensen, thanks so much for that. We're going to check out a few more ridings in Manitoba right now as the early results start to come in. Riding Mountain, the PC incumbent, Greg Nesbitt, ahead with 61% of the vote. Again, 2 out of 81 polls reporting. It's very early in the night. Riding Mountain is one of those ridings where it's PC all the way. Kildonan River East, one poll reporting there. PC incumbent Kathy Cox in the lead with 49% of the vote. Elections Manitoba doing a good job getting these results in. Polls have been closed now for 23 minutes, and it's PC's 9, NDP 4, Liberal 0, Green 0, leading an elected. In Steinbach, there's one of your PCs leading Kevin Gertzen. Didn't I tell you Steinbach was going to send us a progressive conservative? Kevin Gertzen's well, coming back. I'll bet my bottom dollar. And on. right now, he'd be disappointed in only 92%. In only 92, of the exactly. Yes, you are. There you are, Richard. All right. And Swan River, <laughs> still just one poll reporting your PC incumbent, Rick Wauchuk, with 71% of the vote. And so the night is unfolding, as I said, it, you know, sort of to plan. We saw a couple of pollsters active. Again, PC's nine, twice as much and more than the NDP at four seats. Liberals are not leading and elected anywhere, and the Greens are not leading and elected anywhere. But we only have 13 of the 57 seats now with any results. And as you listen to this and as you watch this, you have to be reminded that you have to draw a line really from Dauphin, Manitoba, right through the heart of the city of Winnipeg to Steinbeck. Everything on the north of that riding, uh, that line is usually NDP mm -hmm. territory to the south and west is usually progressive conservative. And as these numbers are coming in right now, That's the it's very similar to that pattern. It goes back to the history of Manitoba politics. All right, our show tonight is being simulcast on 680 CJOB. And we want to mention that our reporters are paired off with CJOB reporters and hosts throughout the night. Let's check in now with Global's Brittany Greenslade. She's live down at PC headquarters tonight, joined by 680 CJOB's Greg Mackling. Hey, Britt. 
Hi, Lisa. One of the biggest things we've been hearing out, biggest issues to voters this go around has been health care. So I want to bring in 680 CGOB host Greg Mackling now. And Greg, you've been getting listeners to call in for months now. What have they been saying about health care and really what matters to them? We've heard from everyone from Ma and Pa, Jane and Joe Q Public, nurses, doctors, people that are within the system, and they all have an opinion. Union leaders, if you've had health care, you have an opinion on this, and it runs the gamut from it's great, we didn't need to change a thing, to admitting that we needed to change some things. But I think even Premier Pallister at the time admitted in the last couple of weeks or so that maybe this was too much, too quick. Wab Canoe has admitted that yes, changes needed to take place, but has been uncomfortable with the speed of those changes. And I think that maybe has been the refining commentary on this topic throughout the last several weeks of the campaign. We know change is hard. It's difficult. People don't like it. So the one thing we're really going to be keeping an eye on tonight is those ridings around the ERs that were changed to urgent cares. What have you been hearing from people in those areas? Well, I live in one of those areas and I live close to Concordia Hospital and people are not happy about the fact that the ER at Concordia has been closed. People are not happy about the fact that Seven Oaks Hospital closed their ER. Wab Canoe has pledged to reopen those. Obviously, would have to be in government in order to make that happen. The changes, we just heard on CJOB this morning, someone who joined us on one of our open line shows that said, very impressed with the changes versus some of the experiences in the past. So just like opinions, this is one's all over the map in terms of how people view this as either a smart move or something that needs to be reversed. 680 CJOB's Greg Mackling joining me here at PC headquarters tonight. We are going to be keeping an eye closely on those ridings surrounding all of those hospitals. Back to you, Lisa. All right, thanks for that, Brittany. Uh, David Aiken and CJOB's Richard Cloutier joining me now. Uh, let's head on these big numbers, which you just said, Richard. Brace yourself because they're about to go quite quickly. They are, and uh, the progressive conservatives are elected and leading in 14, the NDP in six. So far, nothing for the Liberals and the Greens. The magic number for majority is 29. All right, Brian Pallister currently leading in his riding of Fort White. Just one poll reporting there. But Brian Pallister right now with 53% of the vote over B. Brusky from the NDP. In Brandon West, the PC incumbent with a healthy lead there, still just one poll reporting. Reg Helwer should be able to take this riding quite easily. Moving on now to Point Douglas, where Bernadette Smith, an NDP riding, she's the incumbent there with 70% of the Safest vote. Safest NDP riding in the province, Point there Douglas. You have it. And Portage La Prairie, Ian Wishart, the PC incumbent, 75% of the vote, just one poll reporting. And again, the, numbers, the, the big numbers shaping up as we anticipated. Uh, the Conservatives came in with a majority, likely to go out with a majority, maybe reduced. They're on track right now. They're leading or elected in 15. The New Democrats leading or elected in seven. And right now it's a two-horse race. There's no Liberals or Greens on the board. Wab Canoe, the NDP leader, yesterday said that if you want to vote against Pallister, you have to park your vote with the NDP. Smart move. You and depending on how the splits go, we'll see whether or not the Liberals get any of those votes at this point. But so far, any anti-health care vote is going to the NDP. All right, let's check in on what our panel has to say so far tonight. Julie Buckingham from 680 CJOB. I'll let you take it from here. Hal Anderson joining me as is Shannon Sampert and also Jenny Motkaluk. And we saw earlier that Rick Wochuk is leading in his riding. He was the centre of some controversy this week, yeah. uh, having breached policy. And Wab Canoe, the leader of the NDP, has had his own criminal background right. and history exposed. Does that make a difference to voters? Because we see, I mean, it's very early, but what Wochuk was leading, and does that make a difference? Should people care about the background, and whether it's an HR issue or, or a legal issue? Well, I think people should care whether or not their premier has a conviction and, and a criminal past. I, I think it's an, it's an issue, and I think also people should care whether or not there's a, a sort of a sign of misogyny against women. Well, I don't think there's any <laughs> chance of Wab Canoe being the premier after tonight. <laughs> Rest easy. So I can rest easy. Can but I, but I will. Can I make a quick prediction here? I want to say this because uh, at the start of the show, David Aiken talked about missions. Right. A couple that may not be accomplished tonight. Wab Canoe and the NDP may not get enough right. additional seats for him to keep his job. And I think the Liberals are going to fall from four official party status 
down to two. That will cost Dougal Lamont his job. And then who wants to run the Liberal Party? So I, I just wanted to get that out there because I think that's what's going to happen So today. do you think that, Jenny, that it was a mistake for the NDP to select Wab Canoe as their leader given his background? I was shocked when the members of the, of the New Democratic Party elected Wab Canoe, given that all of those allegations, and not even allegations, but, but criminal convictions, were exposed during the leadership campaign. And it's, it's not just about being an NDP for the sake of being an NDP, but every member of every party is, is a person. And we have to examine the people and their values and who they are when we choose to put them in power. But you know what, interestingly enough, I did not hear a lot of that when I opened up the phones on my talk show no, every afternoon. No, i got to tell you, too, who was the alternative? Right. Nick Ashton? I mean, yeah. I mean, come on, Steve Ashton? There was no alternative mm -hmm. at the time. They, they, they were, their backs were up against the wall, so frankly, they, they got what they got. I'm just surprised they stuck with him as long as they did. We'll talk more about this and many other issues as the evening goes along. For now, we're returning to the desk. All right, Julie, thanks for that. Uh, the big picture right now, the PCs leading or elected in 18 ridings, the NDP 10, the Liberals and Green Party still showing zero. But we do want to say we expect a lot of ridings to be reporting within about the next 10 minutes. So you're going to want to stay tuned. In the meantime, let's throw it down to Eric Sorensen. He's going to tour you around Manitoba's rural ridings. Eric? Yep, we're going we're gonna to get to that. We're going to start first with a look at Winnipeg just because we're seeing some ridings fill in here. For example, the conservative riding right here, there's uh, Brian Pallister's. So, I mean, let's bring that board right up if we have it just to see how he's doing so far in Fort White. Uh, it is only one poll reporting. He has a healthy lead. That would be a surprise if he did not go on to win that. Let's come on back out to the map again and just see, though, that there are some things happening for the NDP that aren't too bad for the moment. That's Saint Vital that's turning orange for the NDP there. Kildonan River East, that's another, that would represent another takeaway for the NDP. Let's bring it out to what we're calling the Red River Valley, sort of the greater Winnipeg area. And you can see one more. That is Selkirk. Now, that's uh, Alan Lajamodier for the, Republic, uh, for the uh, Conservatives who holds that riding. They have switched it around because Selkirk used to be a little bit further to the east. They brought it over. The community of Selkirk itself came over with that. He would hope to, to hold this, but uh, if we have... Selkirk as a board to look at. We'll see what's happening, and it's Mitch Obach who is ahead of Lajimodier by uh, a, more than 200 votes, only with one poll reporting, but the, it's not a bad start to get a 280-vote lead with only one poll reporting. We have other tools that we're looking at, and one of them that's worth looking at right now would be the popular vote. Uh, just because you start to get a sense then of what, how these parties are doing, you've been talking about all of them, you can see that right now the Conservatives can't be unhappy with 47%. That would still be almost a high watermark for them, uh, not quite as much as 2016, but not much of a come down yet. The NDP will have gained almost 10 points with what we see so far. The Liberals are off a bit. The Greens are not having this kind of breakthrough that we might have been expecting, but that's just so far. We can't be too sure. And of course, the other thing, as we've talked about, is what we call our majority meter. This is the race to get to 29 because the Conservatives are more than halfway there right now. They're standing at 19. They just want to get to 29 or beyond. And it, uh, right now, they seem to be on their way. The NDP looks like they're the ones that are picking up the most seats so far, but far short of what the Conservatives are doing. Lisa. All right, Eric Sorensen, thanks for that. Right now we have the Progressive Conservatives leading or elected in 19 ridings, the NDP 13, and the Liberals showing one. Do we know what's I was just saying there? to Richard, I was sneaking in, I don't know if you heard that whisper, River Heights, and who's mm -hmm. running in River Heights? Well, it's going to be the good Dr. John Gerard, yeah. and uh, he If they're going is, to win one riding, it's going to be That's the one, yeah. but so far in St. Boniface, that's the key for the Liberal fortunes and their leader in St. Boniface. But Fort Gary is one of those very interesting ridings, Lisa, because there, so far, the NDP are leading. Mark Wasiliu is the NDP candidate, former, well, he's still a uh, Winnipeg uh, uh, trustee, but he's running there, he's a lawyer, he's run in federal elections before. But if the NDP are going to be a solid opposition party, and that's where it's looking right now, but if they're gonna make a comeback, they have to win those ridings, St. Vital, Fort Gary, in the, uh, in the urban part of Winnipeg. You're absolutely right. I just want to also mention the NDP are picking up seats. No other party's picking up seats, and mm. the NDP are picking up seats. Kildonan, River East, McPhillips, right now, and Burroughs. And at the cost of the Liberals, that Liberal vote, as Eric showed us, is going right down. That's right. So, so right now, the NDP are at 14 seats. Remember, they started the night with 12. And I heard Hal a minute ago thinking maybe the NDP weren't going to be mission accomplished. We'll see. But right now, they're doing better than when they started. But the PCs are 
comfortably ahead with 19. Still some lots of ridings that haven't reported a single vote yet. All right. The Green Party of Manitoba looking for just one seat tonight. Let's throw it down to Global's Amber McGookin. She's in the Wolseley riding this evening and she's standing by with the Greens campaign manager, Mel Hebert. Hey, Amber. Hey, Lisa. Yeah, that's right. I'm with Mel Hebert, the Green Party's campaign organizer. So, Mel, we've seen some success for the Green Party across Canada. How do you think that might influence the, the results here in Manitoba? Yeah, we're definitely building on that momentum. I think what people are seeing is that Greens, they're a serious party now. Um, they're a serious party ready to make, you know, bold changes. And, um, yeah, we're seeing that definitely in Manitoba. And what would it mean for you guys? You've not had a seat ever yet before. What would it mean for you guys to secure one here tonight? So what we're finding across Canada right now is once people get that first seat in Parliament, sooner more to follow. So for instance, if you look at PEI, they got their first seat in 2015. Now in 2019, they're the official opposition. Um, in BC, they got their first seat in 2013, um, and now they have three seats. So, so where one green is, sooner more to follow. So it's just up from here. All right, thanks so much, Mel. Back to you in studio, Lisa. Yeah, good. All right, Amber McGookin, thanks for that. Right now, leading or elected, the Progressive Conservatives, 22 ridings, the NDP, 15. This means some NDP gains. So with more insight there, we're going to give it back to Eric Sorensen. Hey, Eric. Hey, hey, Lisa. So, I mean, this map doesn't look unlike a lot of maps in Manitoba elections where the Conservatives are winning a lot of ridings in southern Manitoba. The NDP may be coming back in, uh, in uh, Key Wait and look. Um, hard to know for sure because, you know, early night, uh, not that many votes counted. Do we have the board for Kiwaitnuk just to give you a sense of how close it might be? Because in some of these instances, I looked at it a few moments ago, and in Kiwaitnuk, they had about a three-vote lead. And in another riding Interlake, I think, if we have that one, it was also a very narrow lead. That, uh, here's Kiwaitnuk right there. And what is the lead? Well, it's only one poll. The lead is three. So there you go. Ian Bushy trying to uh, take that away. Actually, from the Liberals, Jason Harper, because uh, the uh, that was their writing last time around. So there's Key Waitenuk. But if we come back, we can have a look at the map again, and, and you can see that there are some other ridings that are kind of interesting. Interlake, uh, just down here, it's, it has moved south because the Paw Camisac has also kind of brought the Paw riding further south before in between the two lakes. And now the Interlake area is a little further south than it was before. There you can see it. This is a case, again, where the, where the lead is very narrow at this point. Let's take another look just at Winnipeg, because every so often it's changing over. We just want to get a sense of what the map is looking like in Winnipeg for the moment. You can see the Liberals are actually leading in two ridings right now, and I can tell you that's River Heights. That would be no surprise. The one just on top of it, just over the Assiniboine, that would be Wolseley. Now, everybody's been talking about the Green Party winning there and the NDP saying, no, we're going to take that back. Hey, that would be something if the Liberals ended up winning in Wolseley. Back to you, Lisa. All right, Eric, thanks so much for that. This is a great time to take it down to NDP headquarters. Let's go to Kevin Hirschfield. He's standing by with our friend from CJOB, Loren McNabb. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, down here at the Met, and we talked to folks earlier who said there's optimism, they're encouraged, they hope all the hard work before the campaign pays off, and they've gained in a couple of spots so far, 15 seats at last check, which is more from the 12 they came in with, and we're joined now by Six City CJ Weeks, Loren McNaff from the start, and Loren, you've covered plenty of elections, you've seen the NDP at their high points, and you've seen them at their low points, 2016 one, for example, do you think they've done enough this campaign to maybe get moving in that right direction again? I think so. The question is how much. Uh, you can call this take-back night, payback night, call it whatever you want. They're looking to get that swagger back in their step. I can tell you back in 2016, there are still people today who are still feeling battled and bruised from what happened to them back then. They, they lost in seats they should never have lost of. So this is about power, whether it's return to power or just gain a bit of that power back. They might have made an inch forward. They might have missed out on some few key issues, though, for voters and for our listeners. Yeah, hoping to do that with their leader, Wab Canoe. We've seen some I'm with Wab signs here, but you mentioned, you hear the listeners every day. The NDP has said it from the start. Health care is the number one issue. But from what you hear of listeners, were they focusing on the right spot? Do the listeners think that health care was the main issue here in this election? The question is, is health care the issue because you had a bad experience, like the mom who came to CJOB and said she had a 16-hour wait with her daughter in the ER? Or did you also have that wait five years ago and you're saying to yourself, yeah, I don't want to go back to the way things were. Health care might be a big thing. I think they missed out on crime. And I'll tell you where it might hurt them. Brandon East. It was a riding that in its creation, in its lifetime, had never gone 
Tory. It went Tory the last time. The NDP are hoping to win that back, but here's where crime could play an issue. Their Liberal candidate there, Kim Longstreet, is a mom of a recovering meth addict. She's with the Brandon Bear clan. She's pounded the pavement. She's been yelling about crime for years. She put she put her name on the ballot, and she might take some votes from the NDP in ridings like that, and there might be other places like that tonight. All right, we'll be paying attention to the results all night. Loren McNabb from 680 CJOBs with the start. We'll send it back to you here from the Met. Lisa in studio. All right, thanks, team. We want to mention it is 8.40 as we wait for these numbers to come in. Brian Pallister has won his riding of Fort White. No surprise here that Pallister would win there. But what is absolutely fascinating, David, right now is that this really is a horse race. We're still four seats away from that magic number, the majority meter of 29 seats. Mm -hmm. But the PCs are winning or elected in 25 seats. The NDP, 17. The Liberals in three. A whopping majority in Manitoba is about 32, 33 seats. But the NDP so far, the story early, is that they're making a comeback. They're showing some strength, and we haven't seen a lot of traditional NDP ridings count yet. So here's where we're at, just to give you a sense of what's going on. This is our leading or elected board. Remember, that's that's the combined total in what we call the chiclet at the bottom. But here's the chart that says PCs are leading in 20, elected in five. And we just told you, for example, Brian Pallister elected in Fort White. The NDP, we only have them leading right now. They're not elected anywhere. Our decision desk saying still leading in 17, and that's still very it's good. still very early in the evening. That's that. right. Liberals leading in three, not elected anywhere. One of those is River Heights they're leading in. The other one that they're leading in, by the way, is Wolseley is where mm. they're leading. And of course, we thought that would be a green NDP fight. It may yet be, but right now liberals are leading in Wolseley. All right. Well, as the numbers begin to come in quicker, we're going to take some time to talk with our panel with host uh, from 680 CGOB, Julie Buckingham. Hey, Julie. Hi, Lisa, and let's, I, I want to pick up on something that, that Jenny Motkaluk just said, and that was, I can't <laughs> oh, believe... Oh, if you could only be here when the cameras are off. <laughs> I can still hear. And she said, I cannot believe the voters of Manitoba want to go back to the dark days of 17 years. Explain, Jenny. Look, for a long time, we had the NDP in government, and, as, you know, Gary Dewar was a very popular premier, there's no doubt. But the fact of the matter is, is that Manitoba has the highest taxes we have the among the greatest amount of public service we have among the least amount of private sector activity we're worst in education our health care is terrible and so Brian Palliser was real was elected three years ago to transform this and he has taken a, a, a steady as she goes approach and incremental yeah. changes on the right path yeah but, but it's er, but these it's early and this is Leading in or Agreed. elected. Agreed. It is but, early but it days is, in the it, vote count, the but when I saw 20 and 17, it, yeah, I was I know, stunned. I know. Listen, I, th I think basically Wab Canoe played a fear campaign. You're going to lose your classrooms. You're going to lose your health care. You're going to lose. It was all oh, doom typical, and gloom. Typical NDP tactics. And, you know, even things like they're closing the ERs. They are not actually closing no, the indeed. hospitals. They are transforming them yeah. from an ER and, to an urgent care and let's face it 99% of the time when any of us go to emergency it is an urgent care issue it's yeah. not but do you not, not true emergency do it's, you not also think that Pallister's campaign and just the way he is is a turn off <laughs> to some people in me uh, in my Seems conversations to be working tonight Julie. Uh, I, I agree but I have a lot but of voters say to me I don't like how he says, I don't mind being the yeah. tough love premier. I think this province needs me. Oh, but you know, he played great offense, I have to tell you. And when he didn't want to talk, he sent in his really strong front bench. Tell me, do we have a strong front bench from the NDP? Listen, I don't think so. Now, honey, Fontaine, so Flora Marcelino, my gosh. And you know what? That's an important thing to note is it is about bench strength because yeah. one person doesn't govern this province, but right? And the fact that Brian Pallister has attracted and recruited such strong candidates, yes. such experienced people that we can have confidence in our cabinet going forward too. So, he said on CJOB, if he wins tonight, he's in it for the next four years. Oh. So you're talking about a strong bench, so who is waiting to fill those very large Brian well, Pallister shoes? Be here Rochelle for the full term. Well, after the, he says, first of all, do you believe he's going to stay? Well, yes or no? He says he's going to stay. We'll find out. Yeah. I'm five foot ten and blonde. No. <laughs> <laughs> so next time around, think about it. 
and tell us who you think could be the next yeah. leader of the PC party. And by party. the way, by the way, Shandy Strong is the liberal leading in Wolseley, the trans advocate. Congratulations. I old, hope you, feel I hope good you hang story. on. Yeah. Feel good Great story. story. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll put a, put a, po a, a pause on this for now. Um, we'll uh, return you to the desk. <laughs> All right, thanks, Julie Buckingham. We're going to take a look at some progressive conservative takeaways tonight. The PCs sitting, leading or elected in 30 ridings, the NDP 16, the Liberals 3. In Borderland, where 12 out of 46 polls are reporting right now, the PC candidate has been elected. That's Josh Gunter with 61% of the and vote. And once again, the PCs have crossed the magic number of 29. They're leading or elected in 31 now. So 29 is a majority. PCs are at the promised land right now. All right, and in Fort Gary, PC candidate now. Nancy Cook just slightly ahead of the NDP candidate there. I expect this riding to go a while here. Nancy Cook, 37%. Mark Wasilyu, 35% for the NDP. Craig Larkins at 21% for the Liberals. That's one of those key ridings. If the NDP are going to make inroads, they need to win this one back. But redistribution yep. uh, favors it towards the progressive and, and Fort Gary was on one of those lists I saw from NDP insiders that said, you know, if we're having a really good night, ridings like Fort Gary are coming their way. And it yet could. It looks like a tight race in Fort Gary. But the story so far tonight is that majority were at that, that 31 yep. elected or leading for the progressive conservatives. And again, like I say, in Manitoba, 33, 34 is a healthy majority government. Yes, the NDP are making a comeback, but not enough to make a real dent in the progressive conservative. And let's lead. remember, Pallister won an all-time high of 40 in 2016. At dissolution, he had 38. So, you know, that was crazy good. They could give up some seats tonight and still have a happy majority. All right, with that, let's take it down to PC Party headquarters, where Brittany Greenslade is standing by with our 680 CJOB partner tonight, Greg Mackling. Hey, Brittany. Hi, Lisa. It is getting busy down here. People starting to make their way in and we have conservative MP James Bazan in here with us right now and James you have your own campaign to start thinking about but you've been doing a lot of door knocking as well tell us why it's important to help out the provincial campaign too well you know I'm still a Manitoban first and foremost and so being part of our PC team and helping our provincial cousins win this majority PC government with Brian Palliser returning as our premier was so very important I think that this is a great day for Manitoba and of course we got our big kickoff tomorrow and it's uh, going to be uh, a lot of hard work out there. But, you know, the issues that I heard on the doorsteps with uh, our provincial cousins, they're the same ones that we're hearing about. People are concerned about affordability, about leaving more money in their pockets, and I uh, want to make sure that they are seeing those tax cuts and, and, and the proper investments in our health care system, in our education, and we're seeing that with Brian Pelser and the PC team. A lot of working together here. What were you hearing out when you were door knocking about getting people and convincing them to re-vote for the Conservatives here locally? Well, you know, I, I think that, that none of them saw any future with Bob Canoon, the NDP, or with the, the Liberals or the Greens for that matter. Uh, so the, their, their choice was Brian Pelser and the PC team, and they're coming out in droves tonight and giving us that majority government. I can also say it's because of the hard work of our candidates and our incumbent MLAs, along with the amazing volunteer system. It was a ground game, and that is where the fight was won, it was because we had such an incredible team out there working every day, finding those votes and making sure they showed up and put it, their, their, their cast their ballots in the ballot box. James Zang, Conservative MP, thank you so much for joining us. You're hearing lots of cheers here as all of those votes and polls are coming in. Lisa, we'll throw it back to you. Very good. Thanks for that, Brittany. Right now, the PCs leading or elected in 30 ridings, the NDP 17. Let's take a closer look at those leading and elected numbers tonight. And again, once we get more elected in the, in the, uh, the column for the PCs, they're elected in 10, leading in 20 for a total of 30. As we get more and more elected, we'll be closer and closer to saying it looks like a PC government. And it does. In fact, they're over that majority meter. NDP are leading only in, sorry, leading in 14, elected in Two, Liberals are leading in four, not elected in any, any ridings at this point. But this is the areas where Cindy Lamaru in Tyndall Park is leading for the Liberals and their leader, Dougald Lamont in St. Boniface, is also leading, but still and early. I, I'm going to go back to Mission Accomplished. That's four for the Liberals, Mission Accomplished, NDP in the Mission Accomplished Territory, PCs in the Mission Accomplished Territory. Just got to get the Greens in there. And they all, and they all, uh, but I would be shocked win. because Sandy Strong is, is, uh, is in leading Wolseley. in Wolseley. That's a battle between the Greens and uh, the NDP. Yeah, no, I agree with you. All right, in the 2016 election, 
The NDP saw a humiliating defeat. They're really looking to make a comeback tonight. With more on that, here's Eric Sorensen. Eric? Yeah, Lisa, I mean, you can see it on the big map, first of all. I mean, the Pock Hemisack down in Dauphin. I mean, this was historically an NDP riding. It looked like it might be beginning to turn bluish, but for the moment, this could be one of the stages of their comeback. Same thing for Thompson, which now goes all the way up to Hudson Bay, uh, and, uh, and in uh, Kiwaitan, which now only goes as far north as the Nelson River. But uh, this was liberal last time around. This up here was conservative. That would be two takebacks for the NDP doing very well kind of retaking northern Manitoba, which is the way the maps look for most of the last 50 years. Now, looking at southern Manitoba, this begins to show you where, in fact, the Conservatives are winning once again if they're going to win government. Let's look at that one right down here. That is Morden Winkler. They, uh, you know, they, they, they fight with each other in sports in Morden and Winkler, but when it comes to politics, they're pretty much of one mind. Let's look at what the how that race is going tonight. And there's Cam Friesen, cabinet minister, 78%. It's pre pretty uniform that Morden and Winkler appear to get along when it comes to uh, politics. Uh, and then let's now have a look at Winnipeg itself. Now we're seeing some things that are interesting. For example, in the, oh, oh, there, that's changing now because that's, uh, that's the boroughs. Do we have that board for us just to see how that one's going? This is interesting. The NDP taking boroughs right now, they would, that would be a takeaway from the, uh, from the Liberals because Cindy Lamoureux gave up on the boroughs and then moved over across to fight uh, in a riding next door. So, I mean, we, we'll just get a closer look at that in a moment, folks. But uh, first of all, let's just look again at the popular vote because if that 33 to 16 is to hold up, we should see a clear lead for the Conservatives in the popular vote. And what are we seeing? Exactly that. In fact, it's still almost a two to one in the popular vote, and that's a very big spread in Manitoba politics. It happened in 2016, but this should be a bounce back here for the NDP. They may be getting it in seats, but I'm not so sure they're getting as much as they would have liked in the popular vote. But the majority meter, the thing that gets us to the finish line, the Conservatives right now, they're not there. I mean, in a funny sort of way, they're across the finish line, but some of those ridings we haven't called yet, so they have to pull it back a little bit because we're not the 29 yet because it can't be called yet. Back to you, Lisa. We are getting awfully close. Thanks for that, Eric Sorensen. Stay with us. This is Decision Manitoba 2019. is over. The Brick's famous tent sale is back. Get up to 60% off clearance items in the tents. Many items build low cost and new product arriving daily. Plus many more incredible deals throughout the store. The Brick's famous tent sale, saving you more. My dad started independent jewelers back in 1937 and I think he'd be very proud if he knew that his grandsons are now in charge of looking after this habitat build. I think, you know, in this area is an area where comfort is needed and I think homes provide that. This is a way where our staff and our, our community interacts with this community in a little different way than normal. It's just nice to be able to be a part of that. To us, it's not just a latte. It's 100% ethically sourced Arabica beans. It's freshly ground espresso. And now until September 29th, it's $2 for any small McCafe latte. Because we're McCafe, and to us, every cup counts. It's Leon's Customer Appreciation Event, our biggest sale of the year. Get amazing specials throughout the showroom, like $700 off this 4K Smart TV, now only $599. Plus, take up to four years to pay with 0% interest, this weekend only. Have you not tried the Beyond Meat Burger yet? I haven't. All right, here you go, one for each of you. Mm, that's a good flavor. This is actually unbelievably good. Right now, they're just $399. Oh, that's a great deal. Now what's your excuse? I don't have one now. Yeah, you don't have any Especially excuse? Especially $399, I mean. A battle is brewing between transformation and decay, where one wrong move... It keeps growing! We are not losing another container to that landfill! His brother never made it! No! Could trash everything. If we're gonna avoid the landfill, we'll need some help! Their fate depends on you. Recycle the right stuff. Recycle everywhere. Welcome back. We have breaking news.
Global News is projecting a progressive conservative government. Brian Pallister, a second term as your premier, Manitoba. All six foot eight inches of Brian Pallister. The key question here, though, is it will it be a majority government? We're not quite there yet, David. Absolutely. We're very confident. And the decision desk has said it's going to be a PC government for sure. Majority, minority, still TBD because the PCs are leading or elected in 34 seats. NDP leading or elected in 18 seats. And so in the view of our decision desk, there's still enough close races out there involving progressive Progressive conservatives, they might fall back from first to second. And so we're going to wait a little bit to see if it's a majority minority, but definitely it's going to be Premier Pallister tomorrow morning. All right, sure to be a celebratory tone down at PC headquarters right now. Let's go to Brittany Greenslade. Brittany? Yeah, Lisa, there's been a lot of excitement here tonight. A lot of people starting to make their way down here. And after we called Brian Pallister getting that seat and now making government, a lot of people very elated. We know that Premier Brian Pallister is watching from a back room here at Canada's Polo Park. He is with his campaign manager. We are expecting him to come out here a little bit later, but for now, he is holed up watching these election results with his family. And hopefully we'll be hearing from him very soon. Lisa, back to you. All right, Brittany, thank you. With that, we're going to send it down to NDP party headquarters and Kevin Hirschfield. Kevin? Yeah, you wouldn't, you know what, you wouldn't know it by being here that the NDP has just lost the election and the music is playing. People seem pretty ecstatic still, but again, the news, the NDP not hoping for, uh, but they're going to be watching for those number of seats now. They come in right now with 12 coming into this election. Now they have 18. So how many more of those seats can they gain in the legislature? Of course, many of those ridings they lost in that 2016 Tory election. They're hoping to get those back tonight. So again, not the main result the NDP wanted here tonight, but folks still encouraged. We're hearing loud cheers every time an NDP candidate comes up on the screen. So they're hoping to gain as many seats as they can tonight. Wab Canoe is watching with his family at the Radisson. They're watching the results together, and we're expecting to hear from him in a little while to see what he has to say. We'll send it back to you, Lisa. All right, just to recap, we have declared a progressive conservative government. Right now, the PCs are leading or elected in 33 ridings. To delve into these numbers a little closer for you, Eric Sorensen. Hey, Eric. Hey, Lisa. We're just looking at that map of Winnipeg, and we're still trying to sort of say, so where is it? How is it that the conservatives are winning another election here, and where do you really see it? In the northeast part of Winnipeg, where you have, say, Rossmere, you know, these are areas that at one time, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, River East, but in Rossmere, for example, when that turns conservative, you wonder, can the NDP come back there or have the demographics changed? But in Radisson, in Radisson, this would be an area, again, where the NDP would hope to come back the way they are in Transcona, which is going orange. But if, if we have the board for Radisson, we can take a look at that and just see how they're doing there. This is where the power of incumbency can help because James Tietzma is, uh, is your... Uh, MLA from there, and he has a reasonable lead at the moment, a 102-vote lead over Raj Sandhu. But these are some of the ridings where the demographics are changing a bit and may be a way in which the Conservatives can kind of shore up inside the city of Winnipeg. When you look outside the city of Winnipeg, well, this is a very common, uh, familiar look to the map of Manitoba. By the way, we should mention only a couple of ridings not reporting yet. One of them is Flin Flon up here. But if we go down and look at southern Manitoba, I think we can look, for example, at just the types of ridings they win, and they win them over and over again. Right here you have, uh, well, this is Spruce Woods for sure. Right up here, that's Agassiz. If we have the board for Agassiz, I think we'll see Elaine Clark uh, is uh, winning there, cabinet minister for uh, Mr. Pallister, if we have Agassiz, and we do. So Eileen Clark there with a 1,200-vote lead. She has been, I think, declared, yes, she has declared elected. No surprise there. These are the ridings where uh, that when the Conservatives build that majority, uh, if they're going to get to a majority, it, it is built on the foundation of the ridings across the sort of southern and central and the park land in, uh, in uh, Ma southern Man and central Manitoba. Back to you, Lisa. Eric Sorensen, thanks so much. Well, no doubt our panel of political insiders is a buzz. With more on that, here's 680 CJOB's Julie Buckingham. We're absolutely a buzz, and I don't think any big shock amongst the panelists, but Hal Anderson, it looks like you and I and our CJOB listeners will be talking about Premier Pallister and his government for the next four years. Yes, congratulations, <laughs> uh, Mr. Premier, the tough love Premier. I think, it's, um, uh, I think it's safe to say that for the most part, 
Premier Pallister said, here's what I'm going to do. He did it. And he is getting another chance uh, to, to do another four years. Did we in the save province. the tape where he says he will remain premier for the entire term? Well, he, he told our Richard Cluche, yes. in fact, that he's going to stick around for, for the full term. Can I just quickly say about health care? Um, we've had a couple people, Greg Mackling was one, Laura McNabb said this. I think that the people that were upset about health care, the changes that were being made, were very vocal. The opponents were vocal. But anecdotally, I have been hearing lately from people that have actually been using the urgent care and using the ERs, and, and almost all of them have said it's been a better experience. Well, the WRHAs came in and said that the actual wait times are coming down. Now, whether mm -hmm. or not that's political or not, yeah. they, they have said the wait mm -hmm. times are coming down. The truth is, is that, you know, all depend. you have to watch the source, right? When people say the health care is being cut, we've never spent more money on health care. The wait times are up. The wait times are down. The truth of the matter is it was a, it was an ugly quagmire and Brian Pallister and his health minister are making efforts to make it better. Couldn't get worse, could it? Can't well, get worse. Yeah. I, I lived in Alberta in 1993 when there was a problem with health care and Klein came in and decimated health care. Yep. This was nothing like 1993 no, you know, and, and health care. You know, I would characterize, you know, Premier Pallister's last term as incremental, steady as she goes, don't tip the canoe. All the furs <laughs> don't want to land in the river. Pun intended. Right? But, but that's... <laughs> I just got that. But, you know, and now I wonder that if, you know, depending on the strength of this of this mandate, I wonder if he's going to be emboldened to maybe move a little faster, well, a little bolder And the question that I keep getting right over and over again is why aren't we getting what we're getting with Ford and why aren't we getting what we're getting with Kenny when we get Pallister? And maybe we should be thinking the lucky stars we haven't so far and is that coming well More i guess that you know i guess it all depends on your perspective sure. of jason kenny right? well yeah. let's keep the uh, the boat and the canoe uh, <laughs> metaphors for next time around right. and we'll return it to the desk <laughs> All right, thanks for that, Julie. Why didn't we think of that one? Yeah. That's a good That's one. one yeah. All righty, the Liberals leading or elected in three ridings right now. The PCs, 33, the NDP leading or elected in 19. So let's take a look at those ridings that the Liberals are leading in, beginning with River Heights. John Gerard has a healthy lead with 48% of the votes, a 192 vote lead over a conservative challenger. Seven out of 46 polls reporting in St. Boniface. This is Dougal. Lamont's riding. He is, of course, the incumbent there, right now leading with 50% of the vote. And he, of course, he's the leader of the party, and uh, he just won that from, this is where Greg Selinger used to be, and it looks like voters in St. Boniface are saying, I like that Lamont guy. I'm sticking with him. And you're into this one, uh, Richard Cloutier, Tyndall Park. This really talks about the power of Cindy Lamaru and the Lamaru name in that area. So far, it's a tight lead, 68 vote lead, 46% over Ted Marcelino of the NDP. But it's one of those ridings to watch, especially if the Liberals want to get that party status. All right, and we want to touch on this, the riding of Fort Rouge, where NDP leader Wab Canoe has been elected. Now, this riding was interesting because he was up against the Green Party leader, James Bedham, who came in third. Right, and the Green Party may decide it's time for a new leader. I mean, a third place finish, not a second place finish, a third, well, we'll see how th this could be adjusted. We're still only 10 out of 51 polls in, but uh, Bedham is a bit of a reluctant leader and he may go uh, maybe some. Yeah, and he has, and I think he's got more uh, ambitions towards federal politics. Well, guess what? We've got a federal election. You might we have heard do. Richard coming up tomorrow. We do, but <laughs> Wab Canoe, the leader, winning big time in his own riding. Yeah, and uh, listen, Gary Dewar, I want to take a little history. I know I'm not from the province, but I've read up in my history. Gary Dewar in 1990 took over the NDP with 12 seats. And in that election, his first, he won 20. Now, Wab Canoe is no Gary Dewar, but look at the bottom. They started the night with 12 seats. Canoe's got him up to 20 seats. And that would be, they're doing cartwheels if they finish the night at 20. That's well, a and they're not elected the in 20. They're leading They're leading or elected. I'm just saying that this is going... This is going according, I think, to the NDP master plan here. All right, the Liberals looking for four seats tonight. Let's check in with our reporter, Joe Scarpelli. He's live down at Liberal headquarters tonight. Hey, Joe. Hey, Lisa. I have uh, 680 CJOB host Jeff Courier standing beside me. And, Jeff, the Liberals are flirting with official party status territory. Do you think they can hang on? Well, it looks like a tough fight right now, Joe. It, 
they're going to lose Kiewetanuk, which is a seat they will now lose to the NDP. That's going to go back to the NDP. River Heights, uh, here in St. Boniface, it looks like the leader, Dugald Lamont, is going to retain his seat. Tyndall Park, right now they're in the lead. Uh, and that looks as though, as Richard Cloutier spoke about, Cindy Lamaru has got a strong ground game there. She's got brand recognition, a big liberal machine behind her. But they're going to have to pick up a seat somewhere else in order just to retain that official party status. Okay, and for anybody at home who doesn't know what official party status means, can you explain why that's so significant? Well, in a 57-seat legislature, you need a minimum of four seats to be official party. And what that means is a whole lot of additional funding, office space. It gives you a lot more leeway. It gives you more time in the legislature to press the government. You can, you can forward your agenda a lot more. And outside of that, the unofficial part of that is that it makes it a lot more challenging to do private fundraising, to get people behind you if you're still not an official party. And they became an official party a year ago when Lamont won this seat in a by-election, a traditional NDP riding, and it looks like he's going to hang on to that, but they've got to find some way to pick up a seat somewhere else in order to retain those four. All right, well, should be an interesting rest of the night. That 680 CGOB host Jeff Courier and Lisa, I'll send things back to you. All right, Joe Scarpelli and Jeff, thanks so much for that. Eric Sorensen is going to take a closer look at some of the close races happening in our province tonight. Eric. Yeah, Lisa, there are some close ones, and that's why those numbers at the bottom of the screen are not final numbers. That 33 for the PCs, NDP 20, Liberals 3, not final. That does add up to 56, which means we are still waiting for one to come in, and guess which one? It is Flynn Flon. Uh, it is not unusual for them to be slow to report. They also have a low turnout, generally speaking, but uh, that could potentially be another number in the column for the NDP. Let's go down into Winnipeg now and look and see some of these other very close races that are happening. Right down here at Fort Gary. We can bring that up for a second. In Fort Gary, this is one of those ridings that is generally becoming a kind of swing riding. So both the NDP and the Conservatives would like to take this riding. And if we have the board for it, you'll see that it's a tough fight right now. Mark Wasilu uh, has a narrow lead, 105 votes over Nancy Cook. Both Mark and Nancy are well known in the community. So this is a real struggle between the two to, uh, to win that riding for their parties. And the Liberals, we were talking about the Liberals before Tyndall Park for the moment. That would be Cindy Lamour, who moved over from Burroughs, possibly winning there. River Heights, no surprise for the Liberals. St. Boniface, that would be three for the Liberals. They want to get to four. Is there anywhere they can get there? Nobody would expect it. But this riding now on the outskirts, which goes out to Headingley now, this is uh, uh, not McPhil this is Roblin. Let's have a look at Roblin if we have it. Or is it, is it Roblin is the one we want to look at? I think so, if we have it. Or it might be Mick Phillips. Here it comes. It is Roblin. Myrna Dreger, she's been around a very long time. I think she's seeking about her sixth term right now. And uh, there was a point there where she had a very narrow lead. It is not so close at this point. All right. 33 to 20 to 3 for the Liberals. The, the thing that is interesting about it, as we say, is we're looking for ridings where are the Liberals in a position to get that fourth one. We'll be back with that, uh, with that idea in a few moments. Back to you, Lisa. Eric, thanks for that. We want to make a mention. The only riding not reporting right now is Flynn Flon. They have just started counting there. So we're going to be waiting on that for a little bit. Well, right now, uh, if anyone has a reason to smile tonight, it's the NDP. They're leading and elected in 19, or elected rather, in 19 ridings. That means some gains for them. Uh, Kevin Hirschfield is down at NDP headquarters tonight. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, of course, we're calling a PC government, but some happy faces around here at the NDP. They're not only regaining those seats that they've held for a long time, but they're picking up some of those seats that they lost in the last election. Joined now by B. Brusque, who's the campaign co-chair, also an MLA in the Fort White region. He lost earlier to Brian Palliser. But as you see these results come in, what are the thoughts? You're currently eight seats higher than you were coming into the night, up to 20 now. What are the thoughts when you see those results come in? We're very happy and enthusiastic about the results coming in. We see that the trend is uh, additional support for the NDP, which is great, which is what we've been hearing on the doorstep. We're, we've been working very hard to rebuild uh, over the last number of years, and certainly this election is a full year before we thought it would take place, so we're very enthusiastic. And just looking back at how you ran the campaign, 
Are there any regrets or things that you wished you would have done heading into this campaign? I wish we would have had more time. Outside of that, I'm really impressed by how the candidates uh, got their act together very quickly, got their volunteer base together very quickly, uh, platform was developed very quickly, and how everybody came together with very few resources as compared to our competitor, of course. And so I'm actually very, very positive about how this campaign has run. And I feel that we're in a really good place to maintain and to maintain the accountability and the, you know, certainly the counterpoint to what government has been wanting to do over the last number of years. Yes, certainly. We hear the positive chatter going on behind us. Just one, one last one for you, B. You kind of touched on it there. What's the future hold for the NDP party? What do you see the future like I'm for the NDP? I'm very excited about the new faces that are going to be at the legislature representing us. They are bringing a dynamic new voice uh, that's going to be in addition to the existing MLAs that have been working really, really hard over the last three years. I think we have a great future. All right, B. Brusque, campaign co-chair of the NDP, who's making some gains tonight here in Manitoba. Back to you, Lisa. All right, they seem happy with both that. Uh, you have some inside info from our pollster friend. Yes, yeah, so our friend Curtis Brown of uh, Probe Research. He's deep in the decision desk in the back rooms here, crunching numbers. And he's just tweeted out, uh, if you want to follow along, that he is noticing that Liberal support is pretty strong in the southeast and southwest of the city of Winnipeg. And that is making things a little tricky for some PCs and for some New Democrats. And we've talked about how Dem Democrats have to push down in the south. That's where they have to go when they want to win government. So interesting here, Liberal support support is higher than we might have expected down there. And I have to say, one of the last articles I read yesterday uh, was about that area and uh, the power of the suburban mom yep. type. That's where they are. Well, yep. that's part of it. And I think also the power of Justin Trudeau and the, the federal liberals as well. And in one of those ridings in the South End, the power of the local candidates as well. That is huge for the Liberals. They've got some quality candidates. And, and of course, federally, those are Liberal ridings federally in that part of the city as well. All right, thanks for that, guys. Let's take a look at some of the close races right now. Actually, so the big picture, leading an elected board first. Right now, the progressive conservatives are leading or elected in 35 ridings, the NDP 18, the Liberals 8. Let's break down these numbers. All right, in Real, your PC incumbent, Rochelle Squires, leading with 40% of the vote. No, she is tied right now. This, this is, is tight. It's a, a two-vote lead yes. for Rochelle Squires. And, and for Rochelle Squires, who has aspirations for leadership of this party, this is one of those close ridings. It's historically always close. And Squires, who's a cabinet minister, in for a very tight race. All right, now the riding of Assiniboia. Scott Johnson, the PC incumbent, with 44% of the vote. Joe McKellop from the NDP, 35%. One of those swing ridings, again, that's gone between the NDP and the PCs historically. In Fort Richmond, the PC incumbent, Sarah Goulamard, with 36% of the vote over the Liberals. Tanjit Negra, a, a Liberal candidate in second place there. Former uh, president of the University of Manitoba Student Union. She's been working this riding hard. All right, and let's take a look at the riding of Roblin. No surprise here. Myrna Dreger re-elected with 51% of the vote. Huge lead there with 20 of 46 polls reporting in the Roblin constituency. And we're at, at the point now, Roblin, a lot of uh, polls we're seeing where half of the polls were in. So we are getting to the point where a lot more elected in our leading and elected count. And once again, let, look at the bottom of your screen if you're watching on TV. For those that are uh, listening on CJOB, PCs leading or elected in 35 seats, NDP leading or elected in 19 seats, Liberals leading or elected in three, Greens have yet to lead or... Oh, very early, I think, was there a leading in any event. They're at zero now. It have been for at least an hour. All right. But they're in Wolseley, and it's going to be tight right down to the race. All right. We have some breaking news. Here it is. Global News is projecting a progressive conservative majority government. We did project that progressive conservative government earlier this evening, but we are confirming now it is another solid majority for the progressive conservatives. It's not historic territory reduced from last time around of 40 seats, but 35, David, for a majority government in Manitoba, that's a big majority government. And it could still be 33. It could still be 34. We've declared it's going to be a majority, more than 29. So congratulations, Premier Pallister and the PCs. Mission accomplished. I'm going to keep mm. coming back to that. Check mark for the PCs. It wasn't the big win of 2016, but it's a big win nonetheless. And Brian Pallister and the PCs can take that as an endorsement 
of their program, particularly on health care reform. And so far, the NDP are doing well enough that Wab Canoe can keep his job. The key question tonight, the Liberals, will they get that uh, party status? They need those four seats. And so far, the Greens aren't there yet, but I expect Wolseley to go a little ways. All right, you did say that mission has been accomplished for the Progressive Conservatives. Let's go to Brittany Greenslade, live down at their headquarters right now. Hey, Brittany. Hi, Lisa. We heard big cheers as you guys called that PC majority government. Now, the biggest question that we're going to have right now is what happens next? We know Premier Brian Pallister is watching from Canada's Polo Park here with his campaign manager. We saw some big names re-elected. You can hear lots of people here behind us as people are starting to stream in here. We've also seen a number of MLAs making their way in here tonight. What is clear right now is that people agreed with the decisions Pallister was making and we're going to be talking with 680 CGOB's Greg Mackling in just a little bit. We'll throw it back to you, Lisa. All right, Brittany Greedslade, thanks for that. Let's go to Kevin Hirschfield. He's at NDP headquarters this hour. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Lisa, big cheers behind us right now. They just announced Wapkinu has been re-elected in Fort Rouge, but another PC majority government yet. I think the vibe here is a little bit different than it was in 2016. We talked to B. Bruss, the campaign co-chair earlier. She's encouraged. She's happy with all the hard work they've done, and they've made some gains here, especially considering the time they had. Of course, this election was called a little bit earlier than they thought, so there's a lot of encouragement tonight. They're not only retaining those seats that they've held for many years now, but they're getting some of those seats back that they lost in 2016. So again, it is a PC majority, but again, the cheers keep coming up here. A very positive vibe for the NDP, who again will go down in another election. And again, Wab Canoe is at the Radisson Hotel watching with his family. We're expected to hear from him shortly. We'll send it back to you now, Lisa. All right, Kevin, thanks for that. And while Global News has projected that progressive conservative majority government, there are still a lot of numbers still left to watch tonight. With more, we're going to send it down to Eric Sorensen. Hey, Eric. Hey, Lisa. And so we now have 57 ridings reporting as well. The last one, Flynn Flon, and there it is up in the northwest. And it is turning NDP, and there is no surprise there. Now, let's go down into southern Manitoba and give you a sense then of what has brought this uh, government about for the Conservatives once more. This is, a, this is Morton Winkler. We talked about them. This is Borderland. It's right on the U.S. border. And then that one up there, they'll recognize it if they're watching this. Steinbeck. Let's have a look at that. Because in Steinbeck, if you think Morton Winkler tends to go Conservative, well, Steinbeck does too. Kevin Gertzen is the uh, Education Minister, getting 81% of the vote. Uh, Robert Jessup for the NDP, only 8%. I mean, nobody's even up to 10% from the other parties. It gives you a sense of how strong the conservative, uh, the conservative showing is in uh, rural southern Manitoba. Now, the gains and losses, we want to look at that because when you look at that 36 to 18, there's borderland. We want to talk about that as well for a second. Josh Gunter is leading big time down there, as you might expect, by 2,300 votes uh, with uh, most of the uh, polls now showing. Now, with the gains and losses, this is an interesting statistic, because if you just looked at this, you would say, wow, good night for the NDP. And it probably, it really is, because they have picked up six seats, as David's been talking about all night. If they could pick up and get back to where you might expect them to be uh, after a downturn election, to pick up a few seats and show they're coming back, holding off the Greens, holding off the Liberals. They seem to be doing that. The PCs are, for the moment, they're only down two seats. That's actually a good night. For the, uh, for the progressive conservatives, given that they started with 38 and an almost historic showing in 2016. So losing only two seats, they're not minding that too, too badly. Back to you, Lisa. Thanks, Eric Sorensen. Now we're going to take it down to 680 CJOB's Julie Buckingham to see what our panel has to say about the projected PC majority. Hey, Julie. Thanks, Lisa. Returning to our panel, Hal Anderson of CJOB, Shannon Sampert, political scientist, and also Jenny Mothkaluk, who uh, ran in the municipal election. And we're looking at some of those numbers now. And Jenny, do you think that the, the, the numbers that we're seeing for the NDP is really an endorsement of Wab Canoe or the NDP brand? I have a very hard time believing that there's any endorsement of Wab Canoe, but that's my personal <laughs> feeling. You know, I, I honestly believe that Brian Pallister has done a good job of moving the province in the right direction. I think that the voters of Manitoba want to keep going in that direction, and they are looking for people to actually bring a little transformation to the way that we govern and the way that we manage our province. 
and the NDP's entire campaign theme seemed to be we want to go back to the way it was. And yet, Shannon, it resonated with people clearly as, well, as they're picking up seats. I think Jenny's being a little too hard on Wab Canoe. You know, when it comes down to it, I know, I know, but when it comes down to it, he was pretty charismatic. He did tell the stories that he needed to tell. He won the leaders' debate on television, hands down. He did, he did do what he needed to do for the young voters, and he did do what he needed to do for the Winnipeg voters, and he resonated. What did he do for the young voters? He, the young voters what like him. Do, what, he, what? They like him. They just find him very charismatic, and for some reason, they like him. Wab Canoe is very charismatic. He's a likable I, I, guy. Yes. He's a charismatic man. There's, there's no doubt about yes. it, right? Yeah. And so, but from a likable perspective, of... compared to our six foot eight premier that people find scary, you know, I can see why people would choose him. He does come on, and yet, interesting. The people didn't choose him. Right. The people chose Brian Pallister yes. to be well, premier again. But well, some people did. But I, there was no change in the air this time around, right? Last correct. time it was like, we're going to run these bums out of, you know. I and, think and this last time, time it was time yeah. for But you guys, change. you have to understand, I don't think anybody showed up to vote this time. Yep, that's the that's other true thing. Too. It'll be a, a, interesting to it see the be. Okay, let's out. talk about the yeah. voter turnout and your predictions, Hal Anderson. We wrote them up on the board at CJOB. Yeah. I wrote down a very sad number in my estimation, which is 48%. Oh. Well, we'll see, we'll see where it en- we will see where it ends up. But let's face it, I mean, yes, uh, the NDP number is, is getting bigger. But why is it getting bigger? The, the Tories tonight have still won a, a real nice majority. It was, uh, you know, record numbers last time. Uh, it, it's not surprising that that number would come down a little bit. It's uh, it. it We'll, t- we'll talk about the okay. voter turnout yeah, uh, next time around. All but right. as they say in the sports world, a W is a W is a W. Yeah. This is not just they we'll, this is an, it's not a squeaker. No. <laughs> no. 34 right. seats is a pretty, That's pretty, yeah. pretty big solid win. Solid mandate. That's right. You know, and we're talking about it as if, as if, as if the PC Party Manitoba lost tonight. Well, they were re-elected with a, with a strong majority and a strong mandate to move Manitoba forward, as and, their signs say. And we'll yeah. move uh, forward back to the desk. <laughs> Thanks for that, Julie. There are still some very interesting races in play tonight, so we want to keep you with us. We eagerly await the leader's speeches when we return. Stay with us. This is Decision Manitoba 2019. Hey, Canada. Did you know the brick carries all the best sofa brands? Cindy Crawford Home, Chateau Dax, Abbey Sun, Scott Living, and the incredibly customizable Design to Be. We sell more sofas than anyone in Canada. The Brick, saving you more. La donne mobile. Qualche un malvento muta da centro e di pensiero. La donne mobile. It doesn't take much to enjoy a romantic evening. A little creativity and ristorante pizza. Wherever you are. Ristorante. Real Italian restaurant taste by Dr. Utger. My dad started independent jewelry back in 1937. And I think he'd be very proud if he knew that his grandsons are now in charge of looking after this habitat building. I think, you know, in this area is an area where comfort is needed, and I think homes provide that. This is a way where our staff and our, our community interacts with this community in a little different way than normal. It's just nice to be able to be a part of that. Ridgewood West invites you to come home to Charleswood. This is a new development with a variety of contemporary housing options in one of Winnipeg's most treasured neighborhoods. Now you can live in established Charleswood and have a new home with a modern and spacious floor plan, all of the latest design features and finishes, plus energy efficient upgrades. Ridgewood West, at home with nature. Show homes are open year round. Learn more at RidgewoodWest.com. It's Leon's customer appreciation event, our biggest sale of the year. Get amazing specials throughout the showroom, like 65% off this Sealy Queen mattress, now only $5.99. Plus, win free furniture in every store, and so much more. This weekend only.
Welcome back. I'm Lisa Dutton, joined by 680 CJOB's Richard Cluche and Chief Political Correspondent David Aiken for Global News. And David, you wanted to touch on voter turnout. Well, yes, just because the panel was talking about their guesses on voter turnout, well, we do have some numbers. We get the statisticians crunching numbers, and right now it looks low. Uh, the projected turnout at this point in the evening, around 46%. And again, in the 2016 election, it was what, 54? 56%. 56%. So there's quite a bit off 2016, which was, as Hal just said, a throw the bums out kind of election. Uh, this one sort of a stay the course election, 45%. That turnout's not good, Manitoba. And what still got you hooked tonight, Richard? Well, there are a few very interesting races. Uh, and as you look at Eric's big map, you see the NDP retaining uh, and getting back some of those seats that they had lost in 2016. So this is more of a typical type of Manitoba result. Yet still, the PC with a whopping majority, only down two seats, but there are a couple of really tight races in the southeastern part of Winnipeg. Rochelle Squires in a real tight race in her seat. This is the future of the Progressive Conservative Party. Squires is, has leadership aspirations. Now, Brian Pallister, we're jumping ahead, but does Pallister stick around for his entire four years? He said he would to me. Nobody believes that. Well, you just mentioned we're going to hear the leader's speeches. They're going to be coming up soon. We'll probably hear from... Uh, I would expect Dougal Lamont first, maybe James Bedham, I'm not sure, but Lamont first, then Canoe, then Pallister at the end. And I think a lot of people will be looking at that speech from Pallister, trying to read between the lines. Is he staying? Is he going? And, and who might, uh, who, who's positioned close to the leader, trying to get into that shot in case there's a future leadership campaign? All right, we're going to take it down to Eric Sorensen now. Uh, he's focusing in on the Liberal Party and, and, and their focus, Eric. Well, that's right. I mean, first, let's look at the big map here because, you know, the Liberals are sitting with only three. They'd like to be at four, if not more than that. The riding they won last time was Kiwaitnuk. Cindy Klassen, though, the Liberal that, was, uh, that won it in 2016, she's running federally this time uh, next, October, uh, next month. And now the, Liberal, uh, the NDP is taking it back, and they're taking it back quite, quite handily. Now, uh, I just want to pick up on what the Mr. Cloutier was talking about, which is how this map looks not untypical. So I've gone low-tech here just to show you a little bit of what the maps look like. So this is 1990 map. And this is uh, 1995 and 1999. See how those look? See how they look? That looks pretty similar to what we're seeing right here, which is northern Manitoba turning new Democrat, southern Manitoba mostly conservative. Now, to give you a better sense of the faint hope that we are being, uh, that the Liberals and the Greens are facing right now, we'll go into Winnipeg, and you can see Liberals with the three seats that they have. That's Tyndall Park, uh, River Heights, and then over in St. Boniface. Where are they going to get a fourth? Interestingly now, if you come down here, there's Waverly, and then right next to it is Fort Richmond. Let's look at the board for Fort Richmond and see if there is some hope here for the Liberals. Sarah Gilmard is, uh, has 38%, but Tanjit Nagra for the Liberals is only 128 votes, uh, uh, votes behind for the Liberals. This would be perhaps their best shot at getting to four, but they've got to keep bringing some votes in there. But this is, this is a riding where I don't think anybody expected to see the Liberal challenging the Conservative. Now, we were talking about the, uh, the Green Party. Talk about faint hope. Um, everybody was focused on Wolseley. That was the riding that, uh, that everyone had expected could be the one that for the first time would paint something green. Right now, it is NDP orange, and if we look at the board, we'll see why because Dave Neckars is sitting 20 points back of Lisa Naylor. I think the NDP poured a lot of effort into this. They didn't want to give this up. And David is actually doing uh, less well than he did last time. So just to look at the uh, popular vote again, and, and uh, I think what's interesting about this is how similar these numbers are to what they were in 2016. The PCs were a little over 50%, a bit higher than this, but that's what they were in 2016. The NDP, they're about four points up. But the breakthrough, where was the breakthrough that the, Liberal, that the Liberals and the NDP, uh, Green were looking for? The Liberals finished in 2016 just over 14%. There they are, same thing again. The Greens were around 5%. They're now at 5.8%. I mean, they were hoping to do much better. There are many that were looking in from, I think, Greens across the country. We're thinking, this is our chance. We've been breaking through in Ontario, in New Brunswick, in British Columbia. Manitoba is next, and it'll be right in Winnipeg, and we're not seeing that tonight uh, anywhere in Manitoba. Lisa. All right, Eric Sorensen, thanks for that. Are things unfolding as you expected for the Liberal Party? Uh, they are in many, many respects. I'll be very interested in Fort Richmond and whether or not the former president of the University of Manitoba Student Union is able to pick up there. But yeah, they are unfolding because of strong local candidates, Lisa.
All right, we're going to take it down to Joe Scarpelli. He's live at Liberal Party headquarters this hour with John Gerard, the communications director for that party. Hey, Joe. Hey, Lisa. So, yes, I have uh, John Gerard uh, standing next to me right now. John, you uh, entered the room to uh, a lot of cheers. What was the feeling like? Oh, yeah. I want to thank the people in River Heights, and it's just great to be reelected. Um, it's uh, phenomenal to be a member of the Legislature of Assembly of Manitoba and to be able to continue to make a contribution. We're go you're going on 20 years, right? Yep, this is 20 years and this will be the sixth election that I've won. So I'm really thankful to the voters in River Heights. I want to thank my wife who's just been incredible the last several months. And I want to thank David Mintz and the, I had an amazing team of people who just worked so hard and uh, they made all the difference. This is quite, you know, quite a run for you. What's keeping you going? Well, there's still a lot to do in Manitoba and a lot of need here in the province and I love helping people uh, with individual problems as well as making a contribution uh, which I think I can do in the Liberal Party and with Dougal Lamont's leadership. Um, we've got a, a team and it's a lot of fun having a team and uh, we're working hard and we're going to continue to work hard. And how about some of the, the younger uh, candidates, uh, some of the newer candidates, Liberal candidates trying to, you know, get to a position in one day have a run like yourself. What advice would you have for them? Well, we had a lot of amazing candidates and uh, a lot of the results are not final yet uh, until we get the advance poll numbers, but there's a lot of advance poll uh, you won't know for sure in quite a number of these races. Uh, but uh, it's exciting to see so many uh, really, really qualified, highly qualified candidates, uh, young people involved in the Liberal Party. Uh, it's uh, We've got an exciting future, no matter what happens the rest of the night. All right, well, thank you for your time. I know there's a lot of people here that want to speak to you. Uh, Lisa, I will send things back to you. All right, congratulations to John Gerard, re-elected in River Heights. Uh, talk about storylines to watch tonight. Ministers in trouble. Let's begin with St. Vital, Colleen Mayer, your PC incumbent. She's losing right now to Jamie Moses by a substantial percentage, 48% for Jamie Moses of the NDP, Colleen Mayer, with 32% of the vote right the now. The Crown Services Minister, Brian Pallister, appointed her to give her more profile. Jamie Moses has been working the doors with the former MLA, Nancy Allen of, uh, of the NDP. She's been working that riding uh, with Jamie Moses. So far, it's paying dividends to Moses. And uh, Rial, where Rochelle Squires, the PC incumbent, is sitting with 42% of the vote. Mike Moyes from the NDP on her tail with 39%. Since we last checked in, Rochelle Squires last we looked had a two vote lead. She's now got 113 vote leads. Long way to go. Only 18 of 46 polls are reporting. So there's a lot that can go back and forth here. But she does represent the future of the party. She is, again, a front bench minister. Yeah. And uh, it's all part of those swing ridings in the southeast part of our city. The future for her, uh, she's got to worry about the next two hours in the future. And then we get to the months ahead. Well, we're enjoying the commentary from our panel tonight and CGOB host Julie Buckingham. Julie? We'll start this time around with Jenny Motkaluk, and we were speaking uh, as we saw some of the results come in about the Liberal Party, and, and I feel that they certainly have more leadership than they did this last time, last election in 2016 with Rana Bakari, but you think Dougald Lamont made some tactical errors. I think it was more of a strategic error in the way that they presented themselves. It reminded me of Justin Trudeau in 2015. In 2015, Justin Trudeau moved that party as far left as he possibly could, and he became in a horse race with the NDP federally uh, to di really differentiate himself from the from the Tories federally. And here, what I, I see that Dougal Lamont did the same thing with the policies that he that he put forward. We're we're really moving to the left of the spectrum, and in my opinion, that presents him more as an alternative to the NDP. So now you've got people with you know voting tendencies on the left, trying to decide, will I vote Liberal or will I vote NDP? He could have done the opposite. And if he had moved their platform over to the right, right. and presented himself as an all, and, and dismissed the NDP, yeah. Yeah. and presented himself as yeah. the alternative to Brian that, Pallister, that we a, may have seen a different result. That's very interesting. I, I don't know, uh, 
Actually, I think I think that's actually a good point. I think what he needed to do is become more centrist. He did come up with some good policy ideas. He yep. came up with some bonehead ideas at the same time. Like and, what? And, well, the problem that I had was this idea of having a, a provincial uh, police force. See, and that I is liked that. I thought that that's was an interesting idea. It's a bonehead idea. idea. I it's thought a, that was an interesting it's an expensive am I a idea. Am I a bonehead? You are China? a bonehead. Right, it's expensive and it doesn't checking. work. He also, there's a, there's a, also some ideas of in, 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 the one thing that he did have going for him, though, he had some really strong candidates this time around. Yeah. And for the first time, we did not see them have a total, complete blow up halfway through the campaign yeah. with people getting fired and right. walking off the job. So they did a good, good Kimble campaign. Kimball did a great campaign in that regard, yeah. right? There were no yeah. big gaffes, no big missteps. I, and that's why I'm saying I think it was more of a strategic error than anything yeah. else. So can, you're can I, not a bonehead, and, by the uh, way. Thank you very much. <laughs> can I just say that we, you know, we have these results boards. We should have built uh, a Shannon uh, Sampert results board <laughs> so that we could see all of Shannon's former students that are That's running yes, exactly. for six. office tonight. How many? Six. I have six. And how many have won? None. You're not <laughs> a very good... Uh, okay, and let's she's find... She's a great professor, maybe just not good at getting oh, no, so many <laughs> votes. But another great thing is, do you want to know how many of my students are actually working behind the scenes? Most of them Lots. are, and yeah. they're doing a great job. And what parties did they represent those Progressive six? Progressive Conservative and NDP and Liberal, Good so I'm you. obviously you nonpartisan. You you You're well-rounded you. and will now take it back to the desk. <laughs> All right, no question. If you want to learn about politics, work an election, right? That's it. They're having too much fun down there at the panel. I don't <laughs> I know. we gotta, so. we got to bring, bring up our game here on the fun meter. All right. All right, Decision Manitoba 2019 continues. But first, let's take a quick look at our leading and elected board. And again, all the elected now filling in. So the PCs leading in eight, elected in 28, uh, for a total of 36. So they could, that is going to be, Richard, as you said, a very solid majority. NDP leading in seven, elected in 11. Liberals leading in one, elected in two for a total of three. Greens, it's not a very nice night for the Greens. The popular vote is down, and uh, even in Wolseley, where we thought they'd do well, mm, I'm still having some trouble there. So uh, uh, right now, as we've said, PC majority government, NDP is the official opposition, and a healthy one. Uh, Liberals hoping for one more to get official party status. We did talk about it earlier in the night when we uh, projected that PC majority government, the future of Brian Pallister. Your interview with him, Richard, uh, where he said he was going to stay the course and serve that full term, do we believe him? Well, I don't believe him in the end simply because I think when you ask that question of a leader, uh, they have to say during an election campaign it's their intention to stay the full term. But with this type of result, 36 seats, and all the controversy over health care changes, why not stay? Once you're premier, why not stay as premier? He and has that, I understand he's got this place in Costa Rica oh, he yeah. might want to spend some more time at, and you, you can't spend as much time as you can when you're premier. But And he is 65 years old, and people do start to think about the retirement, usually, once they hit that particular age. So he's going to get asked that for sure. When he, if he, He's not probably going to speak to reporters tonight. I'm sure he will tomorrow. And it's probably going to be one of the first things that uh, you or other reporters can ask. Well, a lot of people give him 18 months, but you never know. Once you're premier, once you're in power, you like the trappings of power, Lisa. All right, let's check in with uh, Kevin Hirschfield and 680 CJOB's Loren McNabb. They're down at NDP party headquarters tonight. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Loren. Yeah, Lisa, down here at the Mets. Loren, you know, think back to 2016. You covered that election. I mean, what's the vibe like here compared to three years ago, even though it's another PC majority government tonight? I was just thinking it's so bizarre. There's tears going up all around us. Someone was just holding their baby up in the air yeah. just now for a kiss from who knows who. The, the point is they're celebrating here tonight. We talked about that early in the show, about getting that power back, getting that swagger back, and you're seeing it and you're feeling it here tonight with the tears that keep going on. This isn't a show for them. They're not pretending pretending that they're happy. They're happy. There was time just weeks ago, they're worried we might not get past 12. We might not get to 14. And here they are inching in and around 18, 19 territory. And so I think the mood here is not only vastly different, but it goes to show you the ground that they think that they can cover in the months and years ahead. And they talked about how encouraged they were with the results, considering the short period of time they had to campaign. This thing was moved up a year earlier. 
What do you think they did so well that's allowing them to get at least a little bit of a gain here this evening? I, well, first of all, I think they got a little bit of their base back. You know, this is a union party. They've got a bit of those votes back. We're watching things in Transcona. We're watching things in the inner city with Burroughs and, and Tyndall Park as they've gone back and forth. Um, but what that shows there in those tight races, I think, is that they were able to get back some of their supporters. St. Vital, you know, uh, uh, NDP lost strong support there. And so that's a big deal. Their challenge still, and perhaps where they could have done better, was over the past month, they actually had to fight with their own party supporters because there was a union issue going on. All the unions were bat battling to get votes for the union vote that uh, Pallister had made them all whittle down from, you know, hundreds of healthcare unions to just four. So these guys have been pounding the pavement for months now on the union vote that took place a couple weeks ago. If they weren't so tired, you have to wonder how many more people they could have got out to push that vote in some of those other key ridings. But boy, you hear it again celebrations every time they announce one of those key seats. And just quickly before I let you go, Loren, Wab Canoe as the leader, you know, maybe there were some questions going into this. Could the NDP make these gains or would they fall even further? What does the future of this party look like now with Wab Canoe as the leader and some gains to go off of here tonight? This is a reprieve for him. That would be my what I'd be saying. I'd say he'd be relieved tonight for, on a personal level for the future of himself, but not just for his party. This, this, as far as what I'm hearing from people here tonight, is a mandate to go forward with him. It doesn't put to rest the questions about him. It doesn't put to rest the questions other people might have about him. And whether he's the future four years beyond remains to be seen. But this gives him a strong, clear mandate to move forward uh, for this term for sure. All right. Loren McNabb from Six City CGOB is the start. And still some ridings up for grabs. So those NDP gains could get even higher tonight, Lisa. All right, Kevin Hirschfeld, Loren McNabb, thanks for that. Decision Manitoba 2019 continues as we await results on some of the close races still in play and speeches from Brian Pallister and Wab Canoe. Don't go away. is over. The Brick's famous tent sale is back. Get up to 60% off clearance items in the tents. Many items bill low cost and new product arriving daily. Plus many more incredible deals throughout the store. The Brick's famous tent sale. Saving you more. To us, it's not just coffee or a latte. It's a moment of calm. An icebreaker. See, to us, it's more. It's 100% ethically sourced Arabica beans. It's freshly ground espresso with fresh milk steamed and frothed. And every sip is as rich and smooth as the last. And now until September 29th, it's $1 for any size McCafe premium roast coffee and $2 for any small latte. Because to us, every cup counts. My dad started independent jewelers back in 1937. And I think he'd be very proud if he knew that his grandsons are now in charge of looking after this habitat build. I think, you know, in this area is an area where comfort is needed. And I think homes provide that. This is a way where our staff and our, our community interacts with this community in a little different way than normal. It's just nice to be able to be a part of that. There. Just can't get him to slow down. This class will help with that. We get it. You got it. We're Pet Smart. Have you not tried the Beyond Meat Burger yet? I haven't. All right, here you go. One for each of you. Mm. No, it's a good flavor. This is actually unbelievably good. Right now, they're just three ninety nine. Oh, that's a great deal. Now, what's your excuse? I don't have one now. <laughs> yeah, you don't have an Especially excuse. Especially three ninety nine. I mean. It's the Brick's famous tent sale. Get up to 60% off clearance items in the tents. Plus, get this modern sofa just $3.99. Or this family-sized glass shelf fridge, now only $4.99. The Brick's famous tent sale. Saving you more. Welcome back. I'm Lisa Dutton, joined by 680 CGOB's Richard Cloutier and Chief Political Correspondent for Global News, David Aiken. David just said, let's get speech in. Let's get speeches, <laughs> and uh, we expect to hear from people soon. We're, you know, the order is going to be the guy who finishes third, then the guy who finishes second, then the first place winner, Wab Canoe. Uh, we're waiting for him to speak, uh, hear what he's got to say. He's, I think he's going to be very secure in his leadership. And uh, after that, we'll hear from Brian Pallister, who will tell us, essentially give us a, we think, not a throne speech, but a very rough draft of what now Manitobans can expect for the next couple of years. All right. In the meantime, let's throw it down to Eric Sorensen with a look at how the Manitoba ledge looks now. Eric? 
Yeah, Lisa, and we're going to actually show you a layout of the ledge before and after in just a moment to, to, to make the point. But, but you have to ask yourself, like, what is the real picture tonight when it is 36 to 18? Because the PCs have twice as many seats as the New Democrats after what everyone is saying is a good night for the New Democrats. So where do they pick up from there? Because they've got a lot of ground to make up here if they're going to lose uh, Swan River and they're going to lose uh, Dauphin, for example. If we go down into southern Manitoba and you can see, of course they're going to win in these ridings as you would expect for the, uh, for the Conservatives. But if you get past that and look at the ridings all around Winnipeg, you can see kind of a vice-like grip taking place here. I mean, these are some of the places up in Selkirk and Red River North and the new riding of Springfield Rishod. These are places where perhaps are Dawson Trail, in fact, places where the NDP has won. These are areas that the NDP has won in the past. But this whole city is encircled by the Conservatives. And if you look at Winnipeg, you get kind of the same picture. You're used to the NDP kind of controlling the, the, the center of the city and the north and towards the east. But you have this encircling that's happening with the new wider uh, boundary all the way out to Roblin and the new northern boundary with McPhillips. And all the way around the south now, you can see the Conservatives kind of taking charge. And, and over there on the east, I mean, that Radisson one, that has to hurt a little bit for new Democrats who are very used to having Transcona and Elm. And, and all of the writings over there uh, being, being New Democrat orange. So this is the way you, when you say, oh, well, it's a pretty good night for the NDP. Let's look at the, well, for example, there's Southdale. We want to look at Southdale. And this one, it would, in a sense, be up for grabs because there was no incumbent there. And Audrey Gordon is narrowly ahead, but it's 168 votes. Now, we want to come out and show you then what this all means. For example, here is our, our legislature, and this is what it looked like at disillusion. And we had this massive win by the Conservatives, and they still had 38 of those seats held when, uh, when we were at disillusion after winning 40 in 2016. And you can see they had so many spilling over onto the far side of the, uh, of the legislature. Well, let's look ahead now to where we stand tonight if everything stands as, the, as it looks right now. And it's not very different. You have the Conservatives on the government benches, kind of in charge. You have some, a few more Conservatives to spare. The NDP is a bigger force over there, but they still have a long way to go. The uh, three independents that existed, they're gone, but the Liberals have gone from four to three. It's not exactly what they were looking at when they looked down at this as well. So I think one of the things that kind of comes out about this is, are, is there any kind of realignment happening? I'm, some of your experts may want to look at that to say, are Conservatives beginning to win in ridings where it'll be very hard for the NDP to win back? Because, again, as we say, 36 to 18, that is not a close race at the end of the night. Lisa. Thanks for that, Eric Sarnson. And uh, uh, Richard Kluche, thoughts on that? Well, and just to pick up on Eric's point here, is this a realignment? Well, generally, Manitobans give uh, their governments two terms. We're pretty kind that way. But what we might be seeing in the northeast part of the city of Winnipeg is this realignment. Two issues here. First of all, health care was a big issue. Concordia and Seven Oaks hospitals, those ridings haven't really turned as much as we anticipated if health care was going to be the big issue. The second thing is suburban development. You drive Transcona, you drive these areas, you've seen more and more houses, more affluence has gone into that neighborhood. Gone are the days that this was just strictly union-based type of constituencies. These are more suburban constituencies now that would suggest that they're there for the progressive conservatives to pick up. All right, we're going to go to Brittany Greenslade. She's live at PC Party headquarters tonight. Brittany, we're eagerly awaiting that speech from Brian Pallister. Any word? Yeah, we are waiting. We hear it could be at any time. Now, earlier in the night, they were saying around 10 o'clock, but we are still waiting for an exact timeline. But I want to bring in 680 CGOB host Greg Mackling now. Now, Greg, we've talked about health care reform, and we saw some big-name ministers and MLAs re-elected. So what does that mean? What did Manitobans think? Well, by any measure, this is a resounding victory for the PCs. Let's be honest. Over 50% of the popular vote, no ministers, no major members of the caucus, unseated. If the Blue Bombers won 36 to 18, we'd be pretty happy if you're a Blue Bomber fan. Well, I think the PCs are pretty happy with this result. It's a clear mandate. We've talked about health care, but I think we're going to hear more about education as we move into this next phase of this now two-term government. 
one of the big interesting takeaways that we saw was Josh Ginter, 25 years old, picking up a seat in Borderlands State, the youngest elected in this uh, election. We're seeing other young people running, other people now elected, and to go with the sports analogy, you need young blood in your party, in any organization, new ideas in order to keep things vibrant, to engage with the electorate, in order to get other candidates potentially involved as well. It's critical, and uh, from my point of view, it's a wonderful thing to see. He said he wants to bring more affordability to Manitobans. Was that one of the issues you heard about during this election? Listen, taxation has been an issue in Manitoba since I was old enough to think about and comprehend the idea of elections. It's always been a back and forth issue. It's a huge deciding factor for a lot of people on how they vote. Tax and spend NDP versus more traditionally fiscally conservative PCs, well, we know which way Manitobans are leading right now. This could also be good for the Blue Bombers. I want to fit that in real quick. 1990, the PCs got a decided majority in an election in 1990. The last year, the Blue Bombers won the Grey Cup. Lisa, with that, we will throw it back to you at the desk. Thank you. Well, that's interesting. All go, right. Go Bombers, go. Oh, yeah. please, please win the Grey Cup. <laughs> All right, we take you to break with a live shot of NDP headquarters as we await leader Wab Canoe's speech. Stay with us. This is Decision Manitoba. My dad started independent jewelers back in 1937, and I think he'd be very proud if he knew that his grandsons are now in charge of looking after this habitat building. I think, you know, in this area is an area where comfort is needed, and I think homes provide that. This is a way where our staff and our, our community interacts with this community in a little different way than normal. It's just nice to be able to be a part of that. With so many important voices in your life, it's far more rewarding to deal with hearing loss than to pretend it isn't happening. Call today and book your free no-obligation hearing consultation. Help is on the horizon. Horizon Hearing Centers. Luke is going to space one day. It's all he ever talks about. It's more than a dream. It's his future. And today, today is a good day. But today would be the last day of his life. Luke is one of the 100 Manitobans to die on our roads this year. But we can do something about it. His life matters. It's the Brick's famous tent sale. Get 60% off this spring wall pocket coil set. 55% off this Sealy Pasta Feeding set. Or the Sealy Pasta Feeding Pro Bag. It's only $7.99. Plus mattresses from $1.99. The Brick, saving you more. To us, it's not just coffee or a latte. It's a moment of calm, an icebreaker. See, to us, it's more. It's 100% ethically sourced Arabica beans. It's freshly ground espresso with fresh milk steamed and frothed. And every sip is as rich and smooth as the last. And now until September 29th, it's $1 for any size McCafe premium roast coffee and $2 for any small latte. Because to us, every cup counts. Five votes. Yeah. Said Burden. Welcome back. A live shot there of NDP headquarters. But a quick recap of the numbers for our 680 CGOB listeners tonight. The Progressive Conservatives leading or elected in 36 ridings. The NDP 18, the Liberals 3, the Green not turning up anything tonight. We have projected that progressive uh, progressive conservative majority government. Yeah, and the NDP, they're just over at the Met here in downtown Winnipeg. That's where they're gathering. And, uh, yeah, it's been interesting here that, you know, the mood is relatively buoyant. Again, they didn't win, but they did a lot better than they did in 2016. And Wabkanu, I think, is going to speak to that sense of optimism that the party has now. Um, and we have projected that PC majority, but there's five races in play right now that are very close. Let's take a quick look at them. Uh, the first in Southdale, 25 out of 41 polls reporting. Let's talk about this one, Richard. Audrey Gordon has really been working this riding. Uh, she is a veteran PC. She has a 143 vote lead over Karen Mischlaus. 
Murkowski of the NDP. Again, uh, this is one of those swing ridings that the NDP, when they were in government, had actually won it. And I know that the NDP, they want this riding. That's the re they're really pushing for it. McPhillips, 22 out of 47 polls reporting the PC incumbent Shannon Martin, 38% of the vote. Greg McFarland from the NDP, 37%. No business for Shannon Martin to be winning this at all given the health care changes. He parachuted in from south of Winnipeg, but the PCs figured that they could actually win this riding. Such a tight race between them and the NDP. Yeah, it's a 31 vote lead after 22 polls. A couple of thousand votes in, and Shannon Martin is just out by 31 votes. Fort Richmond, 33 out of 40 polls reporting, so we're getting close there. Sarah Gillimard, the PC incumbent, with 2,029 votes. Uh, just behind her, Tanjit Negra from the Liberals with 32% of the vote. She has 1,619. Again, this is a riding where Tanjit has been working the doors. She's from the University of Manitoba, was the former student union president there. A lot of university students in that riding to vote for. Maybe she got them out. Mm -hmm. She probably did. She probably did a good job of that. The Maples, uh, 10 of the 36 polls reporting. Mintu Sandu from the NDP. Uh, close race with Deep Brar from the Liberal Party. Right, we're 143 votes are separating the NDP in top, then to the Liberals. Uh, and even that not, far, not that far behind are the PCs with 378 votes. Um, so this is a tight one and there's a long way to go. And in Assiniboia, 38 out of 44 polls reporting there, but just 165 votes ahead of the NDP candidate, PC incumbent Scott Johnson. And again, this is always one of those tight ridings. Historically, Assiniboine will swing to the government party at times. But Joe McKellop of the NDP, he's got 39% of the vote with 38 of 44 polls reporting, depending on where those polls are, again, right down to the wire. Yeah, the window is kind of closing, I think, for Joe McKellop. He's got to close that gap pretty fast, not a lot of polls reporting. And don't forget, this year there is write-in ballots. Uh, people can write in anywhere and they can be dropped in. Do we expect the write-in ballot to really affect many races? Probably not. Why? We've been told from Elections Manitoba, the total number of write-in ballots for the entire province is about a thousand. So okay. it's really not a whole lot of votes, but those will be ballots that will have to be counted. They'll be counted even the days ahead. All right, let's take a look at our leading and elected board coming off that. And uh, a closer look at these numbers, David. Yeah, so again, elected is really what we're looking at. They, they we're getting to the point in the night where we can say, for example, the PCs are elected in 29. So that's the majority just there already elected, but they're also leading in another six ridings for a total of 35 leading and elected. NDP are elected in 12. And again, that's where they started the, uh, the night. They had 12 and they've got 12 there and a leading in seven for a total of 19. All right, Julie Buckingham is standing by with our panel of political insiders. And uh, it's been entertaining listening to you folks, Julie. Well, we appreciate that. And I want to pick up on something Greg Mackling, he was using the whole blue bomber analogy. So I want to take you from the field to the sandbox. And the premier, who will remain premier, is not notably... Uh, doesn't well, play well with doesn't others. Doesn't play well in the sandbox. <laughs> it, there's been a difficult relationship between Broadway and Main Street, right. and also between Broadway and Ottawa. That's right. Do we expect that to change? I'm not thinking it's going to, and one of the things that's going on too is the dynamic of we have Kenny, we have Mo, and we have Ford. There's a lovely dynamic that's going on across the prairies and into Ontario, uh, conservative uh, solid solidarity, as it were, that's going to work perfectly if the Liberals are re-elected in Ottawa, and if the shear goes in, we're going to have all sorts of interesting things happen as well in terms of policy and conservative policy. I think you're going to see uh, a better relationship between Broadway and Main Street, as Julie put it. I think with this incredibly impressive victory tonight, oh. I think Premier Pallister is going to kick back and relax a little bit, and I hope he does, and I'm not saying it's his fault, I'm not saying it's Brian Bowman's fault, oh. but come on, but no, but say come on. Say it's Bowman's fault, say it's but Bowman's fault. But come on, fault. guys, yeah, go ahead let, and say let, it, Hal. Let, let's put all that aside and get things done for Winnipeggers and well, Manitobans. You know, that, that's, that's that stuff point. makes me crazy. And so let's just, let's just admit the fact that the majority of Manitobans live in Winnipeg, right? right? Yes. So we have two levels of government representing us here. And the fact is, is that 
they must play well with others. Yes. They have to get along because there is only one voter, there is only one taxpayer. Right. And we expect nothing less from our from our government. Yeah. Come on, so maybe, get, get it, maybe along. it's time to uh, yeah. you well, know, the change, first, change, the, change the people at Main Street. The and we'll first, figure that one out. The first uh, meeting that they had in a couple of years was just before the election call. That's right. So I don't know who you believe because you say Brian Bowman will say. Listen, Brian Bowman will say the premier won't meet with me yeah. and the premier will say something else. And just like whether or not health care spending is up or down or if there's cuts or no cuts. They need a couples We counselor. don't really know. That's what they need. They need a well, couples you know, counselor. Maybe you have one that you're very familiar with. I know a with. couple. I, I, can, <laughs> I can set them up. Okay, so Hal Anderson is setting them up while we throw you back to the desk. All right, thanks for that, Julie. Well, this campaign began with attack ads on Wab Canoe. And with a look at the numbers tonight, I'm going to say they didn't really work. Well, yeah, they, I don't think they did. I mean, I think it depends on who you talk to. There were some younger voters who did not know about Wab Canoe's back, uh, uh, background, rather, and when they learned about it, went, oh, look at that, uh, you know, kind of rough and tumble. Obviously, I think a lot of older voters, and when I say older, I mean over 35, they had some inkling, they'd heard about some of the stories, et cetera, so it may not have been shocking, but uh, very, uh, I would say, almost vicious campaign by the PCs to really hammer home, you know, this criminal this and rapper that to make him look like a real gangster. But David, it worked. They you think are, it did work? I think it did work, and I think it uh, helped solidify their message. They were on message on that. And again, it wasn't Brian Pallister knocking Wab Canoe in those ads. It was the Darth Vader voice, if you will, somebody right. else knocking It them. always is the Darth Vader and voice. And in this way, uh, the progressive conservatives go down three seats. With all the health care changes that we have seen and all the negatives that Brian Pallister has when it comes to, to even women voters, they still are able to get 35 seats in this. And Wab Canoe, I think tonight, yes, he gets to hang on to his job. But if you're a NDP strategist, you're thinking, how do we grow this? How do we grow this in the next four years? Well, and, and but we're going to see thing. a lot more different changes from the progressive conservatives. Don't forget, you've had your shot now at Wab Canoe's background. That's not going to be an issue in four years. You've taken the shot. It's just as when, you know, Stephen Harper was the bogeyman for the Liberals in 04. It worked in 04. It didn't work when they tried that again in 06. You get one shot and making your opponent look like the bad guy. It goes to your story of comparing Canoe to Dewar in the sense that now he's established himself who is going to be the next competitor for the progressive conservatives? Because I'll tell you, four years from now, it's not likely going to be Brian Pallister. And, and of course, we should let people know, we're just waiting now on uh, Wab Canoe. We're expecting that Wab Canoe may uh, come into the, his room at uh, down at the, uh, the Diplomat very shortly. Let's take a look at the gains and losses while we've got a minute here. So the PC's down three, but you know what? They're going to shrug their shoulders at that because that's still a monster number, as you've been pointing it's out. a all monster night, right? number, yes. MVP right. plus seven, a monster number for them. We want to take a look at the riding of Union Station, 34 out of 56 polls reporting. And this is where the NDP made a big inroad tonight, elected the candidate there. You zo oh, I'm going to get you to help me out on this. Zoma Zoma there you go. 51% of the vote over the Liberal candidate with 19%. Notre Dame, 25 out of 38 polls reporting. The NDP candidate elected in that riding, Malaya Marcelino. In Kuwaitanuk, Ian Bushi, the NDP incumbent, elected there. These are where the NDP made some gains tonight, and uh, yeah, and it's not close. And this was uh, this is uh, part of the riding. We're very we're going to be into a, a general election federally tomorrow. And of course, Nikki Ashton is from that part of the world, an NDP MP. Uh, she's looking to hold that in the federal. And the NDP in boroughs, Danjit Bar. Um, with 40 percent, he is now elected uh, 598 point lead over Jasmine Brar of the Progressive Conservatives. They needed to take that back and they did. And there's Transcona. I, I've, I've been saying again, I mentioned the federal election a couple of times. So the provincial NDP has shown some strength in some, you know, traditional areas in downtown Winnipeg. Jugmeet Singh, the federal NDP leader, he's having a, not a very good month. He's been kicked around in a lot of regions of the country. But I think the federal NDP will look and say, wow, Wab Canoe and the NDP are back on their feet in Manitoba. That is going to make the federal MP, Daniel Blakey, feel a little more confident. And I think it's going to make Robert Falcon Ouellette, the liberal MP in Winnipeg Centre, nervous that the NDP are going to take his seat 
in the federal election. You following all the elections there with me, Richard? I'm back and forth. Following all the all elections. Right. So, with you. so, so, so this night is good for the federal NDP, I think, as well. They're going to be feeling a little bit encouraged because they've had a little bad news recently. In St. Vital, the PC incumbent Colleen Mayer, she's trailing the NDP elected candidate. We have an elected NDP -er there, Jamie Moses, with 46% of the wow. vote. And a cabinet minister goes down. Yeah, Colleen yeah. Mayer was there and uh, was brought to cabinet crown services minister. She loses there. In St. James, Adrian Sal, the new Democrat, is elected. Uh, we're calling that one. Uh, Michelle Richard, the progressive conservative, finishing second. Liberals finishing third. And there's the Greens, disappointing 9% at this point for the Greens in fourth place. All right, we're going to take you back to that live shot of NDP headquarters as Bob Canoe. We have word that he's making his way into the room and up to the podium for his speech tonight. I know, Richard, uh, it wasn't long ago you sat down with him. Yeah, and again, he has overcome a lot in this campaign. And again, the negative ads, he was very calm in how he handled that, explained himself away. And for all those NDP strategists, they said, if he can get to 16, if he can get to 18 or 19, we're quite content with that. And he is now, I think he'll get up and he'll start talking about the fact that um, Manitobans have spoken loud and clear in some key constituencies, but this is kind of where the NDP were hoping to rebuild because they knew that they would be out at least two terms. Yeah, listen, it, it's, it, this was a David and Goliath fight. The PCs had control of the timing. They didn't get punished at all for breaking the fixed date election law. Uh, they had money. They're, you know, well organized. The NDP were trying to collect themselves, had run through a leadership race after that terrible uh, it result in 2016, and they got this surprise election to deal with, and they didn't have the resources that the other guys did. So in this David and Goliath fight, it kind of turned out the way that Goliath absolutely won, the PCs, but David didn't do too bad at 19 seats. And I think, as I say, that is what Wab Canoe is going to be speaking to, the future of the New Democrats in Manitoba and how he and can prosecute what, uh, what he'd like to do, which is fight Brian Pallister's health care reforms. All right, here it is, Bob Canoe. Again, this is coming from downtown Winnipeg, just a few blocks from where we are here in, at the corner of Portage and Maine. He's at the Diplomat, the hotel. He's at the Met. He's at the, the Met. Met. Pardon me, I the Diplomat. And, uh, and, you know, he's going to be there, probably family behind him, cheering him on. And this is where the crowd is going to show their Wab love because he has taken them from 12 up to 18 seats. And uh, and again, as we heard from people down there, that's uh, that's a big success. That humiliating defeat in 2016, this is a, a rebuilding time for sure. the NDP, and I think it's played out that way. Yep, absolutely. It has played out as far as rebuilding is concerned. And again, when you look at the stage, the NDP trying to broaden their uh, representation uh, from all points of Manitoba, and that a young indigenous leader here, head of a major political party, that still is historic, not only in this province, but this country. Here we go. Thank you so much, Manitoba. And thank you so much, New Democrats. Way to stand up for all of us in this province. How do you do? I'm Wab Canoe, and I'm feeling pretty good tonight. I'm very proud of you, the Manitoba NDP. You've done such a great job, all the candidates, all the staff, and the volunteers. Make some noise. Thank you so much. So just a few minutes ago, I called uh, Brian Pallister to congratulate him on his victory tonight. It was a local call. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, very inspired by the showing we had this time around, but uh, Manitobans chose to give him a second mandate, and so I congratulated him. Uh, you know, humble in victory, humble in defeat. That's my goal. But I don't think we were defeated tonight. 
I think Manitobans sent a very, very strong message. And the seats that we took back made it very clear that Manitobans want us, the New Democrats, to not only be the conscience of Manitoba, not only to be the opposition of Manitoba, but to be the progressive voice for Manitoba. And so we'll get back to work at the legislature very soon, and I want to congratulate our new MLA elects on your tremendous performance. You've made history, but you've made us proud. I also told Mr. Pallister that uh, he should bring in the Agri Recovery Protocol. No response in the room whatsoever. But this is a very important uh, thing that our livestock producers need, and I just want everybody across Manitoba to know that we are serious about representing your concerns, whether you're inside the perimeter, whether you're in rural Manitoba, or whether you are in the north. We are a party for all of us. Now, we had a very clear message in this campaign. We said this election was about health care. And I think the signs uh, that many Manitobans agreed with us are all the new, new Democrat MLAs who are going to be coming to the legislature this fall. And so there will be tough times ahead. You know, Mr. Pallister called this election early because the full impact of his cuts to health care have not yet been felt. And so we will be there each and every day holding him accountable and asking him to do better when it comes to health care because the seat pickups we gained tonight show Manitobans want much, much better from their health care system than they've seen these past three years. I also spoke to many Manitobans across the course of this campaign who are thinking about education. And the fact that we had so many teachers running as part of our slate this time was a clear sign that we must stand up for an education system for all of us in Manitoba. A strong education system isn't just about preparing people for jobs, though it does just that. An education system that works for all of us is about ensuring that every single kid in Manitoba has a fighting chance including those exceptional kids with exceptional needs. We have to give them all a fighting chance in our province. And I'm very proud to say that uh, we've got a uh, new MLA from the Wolseley who's going to be joining us. And I'm also very grateful to have uh, been given a second chance to represent Fort Rouge. And what I, take, what I take from those results and the results across the province is that Manitobans want us to be strong when it comes to climate justice. Manitobans want us to solve the climate crisis. Manitobans want us to solve climate change. And so we will take that ask with honor. We will carry it forward. And so we will be there with the young people who are walking out of their classes on September 27th for the global climate strike. You are calling on us to act and we will listen. Our new team, a very fresh, exciting team. By the way, our new team is going to have twice as many new MLAs as there will be veterans on the team. So a lot of new energy, a lot of fresh blood, but also a, a strong tie to the past. And so we are going to stand up for the environment, we are going to stand up for climate justice, and we are going to stand up for a Manitoba that works for all of us. And so I want to thank my family, my beautiful wife Lisa, the boys, my siblings, in-laws, everybody. I've been really blown away 
You guys have really sacrificed to be able to allow me to run this campaign. I could not have done it without you, literally. So I just want to say thank you. Or as we say back home, miigwech. And so it's with great humility that uh, we accept the results tonight. Not because we feel any kind of way about the uh, outcome of tonight's election, but we accept this with humility because the people of Manitoba have given us an awesome job. They have made us the official opposition. They have sought fit to give us an increased seat count in the legislature. And they have sent a clear message to Manitobans that the New Democratic Party is the progressive voice here in Manitoba. And so we accept that with honour, we accept that with grace, and we accept that with great humility. Because over the next four years, we are going to work hard each and every day. We're going to keep knocking on doors. We're going to keep showing up for all the community events. And four years from now, we are going to take Manitoba back and form a new democratic government. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. And miigwech. All right, NDP leader Wab Kanu concedes defeat, but also focusing on the new energy injected into the NDP tonight. Yeah, yeah and you know, Curtis Brown, our, our pollster friend, was noting just on his Twitter feed, and I agree with him, for a guy who, you know, lost by what, nearly 20 seats and et cetera, et cetera, Pretty chippy performance, uh, you know, enthusiastic, feeling very upbeat. You could confuse this for the winner's speech. They're feeling pretty good about themselves. Good line about, I uh, just talked to Pallister, it was a local call. Yeah, guys. Always taking the digs <laughs> in at Pallister. And whether or not he's here or in Costa Rica, I can assure you he's here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, I'm sure the Premier was watching on the, the feed on wherever he is. Um, I hope he takes it in good spirit. It was just uh, just kind of fun. All right, we wait to hear from Brian Pallister next. Stay with us. This is Decision Manitoba 2019. Closed captioning brought to you in part by Lotto 649. Next Lotto 649 jackpot is an estimated $5 million. Plus the guaranteed $1 million prize. A battle is brewing between transformation and decay. Where one wrong move. It keeps growing. We are not losing another container to that landfill. His brother never made it. No! Could trash everything. If we're going to avoid the landfill, we'll need some help. Their fate depends on you. Recycle the right stuff. Recycle everywhere. My dad started independent jewelers back in 1937, and I think he'd be very proud if he knew that his grandsons are now in charge of looking after this habitat build. I think, you know, in this area, is an area where comfort is needed, and I think homes provide that. This is a way where our staff and our our community interacts with this community in a little different way than normal. It's just nice to be able to be a part of that. Over the years, we've helped you celebrate it all. From unforgettable birthdays to long-awaited reunions to spontaneous weeknights. Because whatever brings you here We'll always bring the good times. The keg. Why not tonight? Today, homes are designed for living, for coming together. Home, it isn't just where we are, it's who we are. It's the backdrop to our lives, and its walls are the keeper of our memories. Discover how homes have evolved for living at the Manitoba Home Builders Parade of Homes. Proudly supported by SCU, Manitoba's largest credit union. Malcolm. You have a copycat. I'm flattered. I'm deeply concerned.
All right, we're going to show you a live shot now of PC headquarters. Of course, leader Brian Pallister will be speaking soon, coming off that Wab Canoe speech. And uh, an exciting evening down at PC party headquarters tonight. And I'll say that this is a whopping majority for the progressive conservatives at 36, because a majority in Manitoba is usually... 31, 32, over that 29 mark. But 36 seats, a back-to-back -back healthy majority for Brian Pallister does say something. David, I know the NDP at 18, uh, Wab Canoe saying that, yes, we have grown, we are the opposition here. But let's not lose sight of the fact that back-to-back -back massive majorities and now some of the re-elected progressive conservatives gathering at the Canadians Polo Park. Scott Fielding is there. He's been re-elected the finance minister. So only one big loss of a cabinet minister and Colleen Mayer in, uh, in St. Vital. But really, uh, as it says, moving Manitoba forward, Brian Pallister takes this as a cue to continue on with the health care reforms in rural Manitoba and to continue on with education and other economic reforms. It's going to be all systems go. Yep, and as we're watching that shot at PC headquarters, clearly it's uh, successful candidates. There's Rochelle Squires, for example, um, getting behind. The, you know, they do the potted plant routine. They're going to stand there and clap uh, for the leader. And they're very happy, and why shouldn't they be? You know, we mentioned, you mentioned that uh, uh, one cabinet minister, but just two uh, MLAs losing tonight for the PCs. So you, you come in with a record, and you pretty much darn near defeat defended that record from last time around. They, they started the day with 38 and they're down 36. That's a really good night. You're quite right for the PCs and they should be very pleased with themselves. You know, I think going into this too, and you know, the, where's the excitement that we saw in, the, in both uh, places? I think the NDP were just a little more excited because they'd come from further down. You know, these guys are the kings. They know they're the kings. They're acting like the kings down there. To, uh, you're saying they're over near Polo Park. That's yeah, the they're at Canada are. Inns Polo Park. And the expectation was going into this, talking to their pollsters, was that they were going to get uh, 38, 36 seats as well. They expected to win this thing. Interesting story, though, is the Liberal vote because that slid right, right down. And uh, Canoe going to the public yesterday and saying, if, yeah, if you, you don't like are Pallister, against I'm health care, I'm your man. So yeah. that solidified it for the NDP, certainly did. But again, Brian Pallister is going to have license to continue on with some monumental changes in this province. And dare I say, if you're listening and on 680 CJOB and watching outside the city of Winnipeg, brace for a lot of health care changes in the months ahead, where you're going to be wondering about your local hospital as they rejig health care massively in this province. And I can tell you that, uh, that c congratulations are coming in from around the country. Right next door in Saskatchewan, Premier Scott Moe has congratulated Premier Pallister. And of course, those two guys are peas in a conservative pod when it comes to uh, fighting things like the carbon tax. The federal conservative leader Andrew Scheer. He is preparing to open up his uh, bid to unseat Justin Trudeau. He'll be in trois Rivière, Quebec tomorrow. Uh, he has sent in his congratulations. Um, you know, the conservatives in the country, you know, Brian Pallister is part of the famous resistance on that McLean's And government. it's a good point that you make because I think Pallister in his speech will make a reference to the federal government and Justin mm -hmm. Trudeau and he knows the fact that Justin's going out tomorrow uh, to officially launch that federal election and he's also going to be talking about opposing some of the federal federal government policies that have impacted here in Manitoba. And listen, there are three federal seats right here in Winnipeg held by Liberals that the Conservatives absolutely have a target on. Doug A. Olson in the Charleswood uh, St. James riding, uh, up in Kildona St. Paul. I don't think anybody expects Marianne Mahitchik to come back. And if we look down in Winnipeg South as well, Terry Duguid, the Liberal MP, I think the Conservatives are pretty confident about that. And oh, guess what? Where were the Progressive Conservatives doing real well tonight? All on the provincial ridings that map onto those federal ridings. And we are going to be paying especially close attention to this speech because there is still a bit of a question mark surrounding Brian Pallister and whether or not he'll serve out that full term. Yes. Well, I expect him to say we've been elected for four more years and that there will be no hints that he's going to leave anytime soon. That's going to be up to the whisper whispers of some of those cabinet ministers and uh, some of those PC insiders. But tonight he's going to be saying we are rewarded with a big massive mandate. There's going to be all sorts of ego coming out of our premium. And you know what? My bet is, listen to the crowd chant when he comes to the podium. They'll be going four more years, four more years. And it's going to have a, a slightly different meaning, uh, given that we're talking about Pallister, because he's got He's got fans in the party, even though, as you say, you called him the tough love premier. He called yeah. himself the tough love premier. Let's take a look at some of the PC landslides tonight. We want to look at that. 
In the riding of Midland, where your PC incumbent re-elected Blaine Peterson with 74% of the vote, handily taking down Cindy Friesen. And don't forget, we, you won't miss Pallister's speech. We'll be right back to it as soon as we see Pallister pop up. Right. Calvin Gertzen will be disappointed that he only got 81% of the vote in Steinbach, yeah. but uh, <laughs> almost 5,000 vote lead over the NDP in Steinbach. Yeah, it's not close. That's not. And I told you early on, I called that one early on. It's not a really tough one to call oh, that one. That's rocket science, Aiken. <laughs> And Morden Winkler, Cameron Friesen, the PC incumbent, re-elected there with 81% of the vote. And vote. he got a, Friesen got about 81% last a, time out, And too. a future leader of this, uh, this party and health minister. He's the health minister, and I'll be interested to see if Pallister continues with him as health minister. In Lakeside, all the polls reporting there, your PC incumbent re-elected Ralph Eichler. And you bring me make a good point, Richard, that one of the stories as well for, uh, for you and, and all our colleagues at Global News is going to be cabinet speculation. Uh, certainly, it's time to shuffle things up cabinet-wise, maybe give some newer people some, some important assignments. There is a, you can start a little bit of regeneration. That's very important for a party to sustain itself. But then you don't also want to annoy some of your close friends and make, any, make anything seem like there's demotions for anybody. It's a tricky thing. Brian uh, Pallister has the reputation of, and last cabinet shuffle, he shuffled that front deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was to keep ministers on their toes. And I, I honestly think that Pallister, he may be done in 18 months, but he's not going to show his cards at all tonight or anytime soon. No, and where those, uh, where he does name cabinet ministers, people may also be starting to try to read the entrails in terms of who's got an inside edge to succeed Pallister. It's, it might be easy to do from a finance minister's position or a health minister position. Although, you know what, if I was, I don't know if I'd want to be health minister because, as we believe, there are going to be some, quote, controversial reforms in rural Manitoba coming down the pike and rural Manitoba is PC heartland and then you're the guy trying to sell to your heartland some health care reforms that may or may not be so popular. Cameron Friesen went from finance minister where he was very content to health minister and he was frankly surprised at that move. So when you look at possible contenders for this, Rochelle Squires who is in a still a very tight race, we haven't declared her elected yet in Riel, she's the future of this party as well. Scott Scott Fielding, who you see on the stage right now, the finance minister, he's a former Winnipeg City Councillor. He is somebody that has leadership aspirations. This is a tight one in Southdale. 36 out of 41 polls reporting a tight race between the NDP. And it's a lead change since we last saw it. This is Southdale. So Karen Mishkowski is up by 20 votes, 20 votes. She's the new Democrat, up 20 votes over Audrey Gordon of the PCs, and we're almost all the votes are in. I mean, this could go down to the last poll. Maybe the writing ballots will be an well, issue with this or one. Or certainly a re-election, but Southdale is one of those bellwether ridings that uh, the NDP, when they have been in power, have won handedly. This is going right down to the wire. And St. Vital, we want to cite too, that uh, saw some, some significant boundary changes, Richard. It, it did, but also it. Uh, Nancy Allen, who is the former MLA for the NDP out there, she was door knocking with the candidate, the NDP candidate that won there, uh, Jamie Moses. And Moses has been spending a lot of time out there. Again, 46% and 835 uh, lead there, but uh, Moses elected with 38 of the 42 polls reporting in St. Vital. And, we, and we're just keeping an eye over there at PC headquarters. We'll get Brian Pallister on TV or there's on the, the radio the as chance. soon as we see him. There's the clap. That's yeah, what you were Four expecting. more years. What did I say? I, they wouldn't miss that chance. Four more years. The caucus behind them, the cabinet, the caucus behind them that are in Winnipeg. Again, Brian Pallister making his way up to the podium shortly. Uh, overall, can I ask, did this play out how you expected it would, Dave Bacon? Uh, yes, it does for me. Certainly on the top line, the PCs and the New Democrats, uh, that, that they, I think, again, I, I talked about uh, checking things off, mission accomplished, certainly for the PCs and NDP. Uh, the Liberals, yeah, obviously they'll definitely be disappointed that they don't have party status. And I am surprised to see that Manitoba seems to have no interest doing what many other provinces have done and get a green person into the legislature. So uh, I guess that's going to have to wait another four years. Well, and, and the Greens tried really hard, but in Wolseley, where they had a real good chance last time around, redistribution affected that big time. 
The Liberals not getting party status. Do, do you status. think it was a good idea for, I know James Bedham is from Fort Rouge. Do you think it was a good idea for him to run against the leader that maybe Bedham might have wanted to find another riding? I don't know which other riding. It, it would have been Wolseley, I suppose, if he was going to go somewhere else. Yeah, and that's where he should have run, but he didn't because, again, he's a bit of a reluctant leader. The Liberals at three, yes, they, get, they do not get party status, but they'll still claim victory. Dougal Lamont retaining his seat in St. Boniface is still something to build on for him. We heard Wab Canoe and saying that, yes, we are the future. He is the future right now. There's not going to be any challenges for his job. And while the PCs are looking right now leading and elected in 34, that's still, in historic Manitoba terms, a very good majority government for him. And I remember, I think you made this comment the day after the debates. And if you didn't, correct me. But I think that you thought that James Bedham really had trouble connecting in the debate, that he seemed a little more professorial, it, you know, he really wasn't... A, a lot of the criticism there was that he sounded better on radio than he appeared on television. I, and I watched it on TV. I wasn't listening to it on radio. And I thought, he just doesn't seem... Again, think of the federal leader, Elizabeth May. She's been around for a while, of course, but she's very popular, personally, because I just think she connects with people in a very conversational and formal way. So, Richard, why did they keep Pallister on such a tight leash this campaign? Well, because they didn't want to make any real faux pas. And I talked to one insider that said that if we could have sent Brian Pallister to Costa Rica for maybe two weeks of this campaign, they would have. Because I think, and, and I'll give credit to David McLaughlin, who ran this campaign. He's a veteran conservative uh, insider that ran this campaign. And again, uh, this is a strategist that says, okay, we're targeting our ridings, our specific ridings. We're going to get that vote out. So when we look at the advanced polling and all those Ladies votes that come back, we're going to see we're going to see those advanced polls come back, and they targeted this big time. All right, there he is making his way up to the podium. Brian Pallister, of course, his wife with him by his side. And now, I know how tall Brian Pallister is, and his wife must be as, uh, just about as tall. But that's, <laughs> and Brian's one of the tallest guys I've ever met, as a fact, who doesn't play professional basketball. He did play basketball early on in his career, and we'll always cite that every once in a while. But for Brian Pallister, here is a man that early on during the former Philman government here in Manitoba in the 1990s, he was, you know, on the outside. And he won cabinet and then went to the federal politics and spent a lot of time in federal politics. And was essentially anointed leader of the Manitoba Progressive Conservatives. Yeah, when no one wanted that job. And built that job big time. And now he can say to people, and, and he, he is a controversial figure, my way or the highway, but certainly they have won again with Brian Pallister at the helm. All right, high fives all round for Brian Pallister. He's coming in for a second term as Manitoba Premier. Wow. Four more years! Thank you, Manitoba. Thank you, Manitoba. Thank you very much. As in, as in every election, Manitobans had a chance to make a decision. They made a choice. Vous avez fait votre choix. Not backward. Forward. Forward. Forward to balanced budgets. Forward to better care and sooner. Forward to new schools for our children and grandchildren. Forward to a stronger economy for all of us. And forward to more affordability for families with lower taxes and more money right on the kitchen tables of Manitoba families. Thank yous are in order. I want to say, first of all, thank you to all the candidates, all the supporters, and to the leaders of the other parties for making democracy work, for giving people choices. That's what democracy is all about. Tonight, they chose. And those other candidates for those other parties and those other leaders deserve our thanks and our congratulations for giving people in Manitoba a chance to choose.
I want to say a special thank you to our whole campaign team and to David McLaughlin and Tannis Drysdale for all the work that they and the whole team have done. Thank you. And I want to say a, a, a very heartfelt personal thank you to all of the dedicated volunteers. We are the volunteer party. Thank you to all the volunteers who worked on all our campaigns right across the province. And I want to say a special thank you as well to the best slate of candidates that ever was presented to the people of the province of Manitoba, all the PC candidates and their families. Thank you for your dedication. And if you'll permit me, I also want to say thank you to our family, to my family, to Esther's family, for their support, for their love, for their advice and counsel, and to our good friends who have stood by us through thick and thin when we were not as good of friends as we should have been. Because this job is consuming. And I thank them, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart, and I thank all the friends across Manitoba of our MLAs who will serve the people of Manitoba with diligence and dignity and grace. Thank you for your support and your love and your kindness. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you'd allow me, I want to reflect for a moment on 27 years ago when we had a one-year-old who's not one anymore and we decided to get into politics because our town was dying and we accepted a challenge that many others have as well of getting into public life and Esther and I became empty nesters this January and I don't like it but she did all the work so she's fine with it but this is the first campaign in my political time of service that I've been able to campaign alongside my wife, Esther. And I want to say, I thank God for Esther, and I thank Esther. <laughs> Look, you all know, and Manitobans recognize, that we inherited a massive responsibility. Uh, some would call it a mess. <laughs> but like the Manitoba bison that is in our logo and that inspires us, we are accepting of those challenges. The Manitoba bison, unlike most species, when faced with a challenge, always turns and faces toward it. And we did that, and we've done that, and we've done it with focus. We face our challenges together. Manitobans do that, and today and tonight, they said they appreciated the fact that we fixed the finances and we're repairing the services and we're rebuilding the economy of our province. There is absolutely no doubt that Manitoba is now Canada's most improved province. We are the Keystone province. We are the center of Canada. We are no longer Canada's best kept secret. And next year when we unite to celebrate our 150th birthday, our 150th birthday in the most beautiful and blessed country on the face of the earth, our Canada, we will come together next year and we will come together to honor our past but I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that we will also come together to celebrate the future of Manitoba. <laughs> Manitobans worked with us, all hands on deck. Manitobans have repaired Manitoba's foundation, and now Manitobans, and we will join with them in this, will rededicate themselves as we will rededicate ourselves to building on that renewed and strengthened foundation, to build the Manitoba of our dreams, to build the home of hope right here in Manitoba, to build the place where truly Canada's heart beats.
Manitoba, united, never backward, like the Manitoba bison, always forward. The sky used to be dark, but the clouds will lift. Perhaps not tomorrow or the day after, but they will lift. And there will be a new day, and it will be a brighter day, and it will be under a blue sky. And I say to you, because of your dedication and because of the values that Manitobans demonstrated today in choosing forward, the only thing better than today in Manitoba is going to be tomorrow in Manitoba. No congratulations to Wob or Dupal. Yeah, no. I found that a bit uh, odd. Or just to say, congr I mean, he did congratulate all the candidates on the ballot. And right. I guess that is Wob Canoe by definition. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't say to your opposition leader, you know, congratulations to the opposition. I look forward to seeing them in the legislature. Uh, you know, I guess you could take it or leave it. But, Richard, you were saying that these guys aren't the, the friendliest of fellows in any event. Well, but I'm always struck by not only the words, but the images. And for our 680 CJOB listeners, Brian Pallister at the podium Heather Stephenson, Deputy Premier, kind of tucked behind him, and then a lot of older, middle-aged MLAs you, behind Richard. him with no women. And very stark contrast to the NDP headquarters where you had Wab Canoe, a young person, uh, indigenous people, a variety of people in that room. And you could make the argument that one represents kind of the changing reality of Manitoba. They lost tonight versus kind of the older Manitoba here in Brian Pallister. Now, that's a stretch to make that analogy because there are a lot of young Tories here as well. And on that stage, there are a lot of women that represent the progressive conservatives. But as far as images are concerned, I think, David, that does say something. And if you're a party insider, you're going to have to answer as to why those people were behind Brian Pallister because during the campaign he made sure he had diversity behind him. Right, and I can tell you this anecdote as a matter of fact. This is something that, that all politicians, particularly white, polit white male politicians, are thinking about uh, as they campaign in a multicultural, multilingual, diverse environment men, women, in this case indigenous people. Uh, we want our politicians or our political groups, if you will, to look like Canada, to look like the groups they're representing. Uh, in, in uh, legislature. And I think this clearly seemed to be an oversight. It is all the cabinet ministers and it is uh, all the caucus and they seem to have just arranged themselves as opposed to the normally it is quite stage managed. We're going to make sure we have, as I say, people from, uh, from, from all around. And, and it did look different than, than Wobbs. There's a different energy. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that the PCs have to be aware of. I think that you look at, you know, the party polls well. Brian Pallister as an individual does not. And this is sort of a testament to that. I feel like a lot of the same feathers are ruffled. Yeah. I mean, just taking a look at one thing, when we talk about participation in our political process, uh, we want more young people to vote. We want more women to vote. Uh, we want more women to run as candidates. That's a, that's a real push for a lot of political parties. Uh, and we want Indigenous people to vote. Look at the projected turnout right now. And, I, turnout and is David, I know 50%. Brittany Greenslade is in that uh, scrum right now at Progressive Conservative Party headquarters uh, at the Canada Inns at Polo Park. All right, still more to come. Stay with us. You're watching Decision Manitoba on Global Winnipeg and listening on 680 CJOB. Product Care Recycling, we know paint makes our world a brighter place. And the best thing you can do with your leftover paint is recycle it for free at a recycling location near you. Product Care Recycling, helping make our world a better place.
Gamma Luna by Cirque du Soleil. Playing September 14th through October 20th under the big top at Sterling Lion Parkway and Keniston Boulevard. Presented by Sun Life Global Investments. Have you not tried the Beyond Meat Burger yet? I haven't. All right, here you go. One for each of you. Mm, that's a good flavor. This is actually unbelievably good. Right now, they're just $3.99. Oh, that's a great deal. Now what's your excuse? I don't have one now. Yeah, you don't have an Especially excuse? Especially $3.99, I mean. Wherever you are, whatever you're craving, and whenever you're craving it, DoorDash has the restaurants you want. Delivered to your door, wherever your door happens to be. Download DoorDash and bring the restaurants to you. First order, $0 delivery fee. Lake Winnipeg, the heart of Manitoba. It defines our province and inspires our people. But the algae blooms on our lake are impossible to ignore. Winnipeg's North End Sewage Plant is not meeting provincial guidelines. Inaction is not an option. There's too much at stake. Buckley's Complete Plus Mucus provides all-in-one relief from more cold and flu symptoms than you can count on one hand, like coughs, sore throats, nasal, sinus, and chest congestion, fevers, and minor aches and pains. Buckley's Complete Plus Mucus. It tastes awful, and it works. It's Leon's Customer Appreciation Event, our biggest sale of the year. Get amazing specials throughout the showroom, like 50% off this Collier Shays, now only $5.99. Plus, win free furniture in every store, and so much more. This weekend only. At Product Care Recycling, we know paint makes our world a brighter place. And the best thing you can do with your leftover paint is recycle it for free at a recycling location near you. Product Care Recycling, helping make our world a better place. FBI! We're good, we're gonna crack this. That's a live shot of the big blue room tonight in Manitoba. You have decided, and Brian Pallister is serving a second term as your premier. A progressive conservative majority government is the result tonight. Uh, we're waiting on Pallister to finish up with this scrum and uh, hoping to turn around some clips from that. I think that, that that speech left people wanting maybe a little bit more. Well, clearly the reporters definitely want mm -hmm. some more. I mean, he, he had some very nice things to say. And again, it's not a throne speech we're looking for, but he did talk about the 150th anniversary. That is going to be a big deal for Manitoba, obviously. He wants to be part of that. But no hints on health care reform. No hints on when he might recall the legislature. In other words, I'm going to assume he probably wants to wait out the federal election now, right? Mm -hmm. So, And that election doesn't finish till October 21st. So uh, there'll be a lot more questions for the Premier tonight and tomorrow. Okay, some close races still in play. Your time now is 1044. We're going to go to Eric Sorensen now. He's standing by life. Thought we should take another tour of the maps of Manitoba here because, I mean, this looks a little bit like we've seen a lot in the past. The NDP coming back to win the four northern ridings. But if you look at southern Manitoba, you've got 21 ridings outside of Winnipeg. The uh, Conservatives have swept the table on that one all the way down to Brandon, even Brandon, where they won in uh, Brandon West, which is not unusual, but they won Brandon East. So they've won there two terms in a row after 47 years in a row uh, where the NDP held that riding. So that's a, that has to be a disappointment. Now, going over to uh, Winnipeg itself, you can see that the, the, uh, the Conservatives have done pretty well in the areas you would expect in the uh, kind of the western part of this, the city, all the way out to, uh, to uh, Roblin, the, the new bigger riding out here. Uh, of course, the Premier himself, down to Seine River. On the north side, this will be, as we said earlier, a little bit disappointing for the New Democrats if they lose in Rossmere. It's not a done deal yet. There are a couple of close races to look at, as you were saying, Lisa. Let's look at those now. First of all, Southdale. Karen Mischkowski has a 28-vote lead over Audrey Gordon in Southdale. Now, 38 of the 41 polls are reporting, but 28 votes can be turned around pretty quickly. In McPhillips, there's Shannon Martin. You know, you said that, uh, hey, he went from down south of the city. Of course, he lost his riding in Morris. He had to find somewhere to go. His musical chairs for some of those ridings when they lost one of the rural ridings in Manitoba to uh, Winnipeg. So Shannon Martin landed in McPhillips, but he has a very narrow lead still over Greg McFarland, just 70 votes, and that one's too close to call. 
And we just wanted to show you the maples. It's not so close, but it's not quite done yet because only 21 of the 36 polls are reporting. And the reason for looking at it in, uh, with Mintu Sandu's lead, it's a lead of 330. It's pretty healthy. But if the Liberals were to have a chance to win, uh, uh, to get their fourth seat and official party status, this is where it has to happen. So it's a tall order, but that is the place where they would try with a deep bra. Now, the popular vote. You heard Wab Canoe talking about this. He emphasized it twice. And I think what's important here is, first of all, let's start with the NDP. They, they rose about five points to 30.8, and the Liberals are actually down for the moment a little bit at 13.9. They now have more than a two-to-one lead. It was much closer in 2016. There was thinking that the Greens would come through with a big breakthrough. Well, they have uh, scored more votes to in total this time around, even though it's a down election in terms of voter turnout, the Greens will have, I think, at the end of the night, a record turnout, but still 6.3% and no seats. That is a disappointment for them. The Liberals have to be disappointed if they only end up with three seats and only 13.9%. The big story, though, has to be that the PCs themselves, 48.4%. Hey, it was bigger in 2016, but there hasn't been anything this big since 1977 when Sterling Lyon won. So to be able to follow up 2016 with a showing of 48.4% for the PCs, that's a pretty good showing for, uh, for the Premier who is re-elected. Back to you, Lisa. All right, Eric Sorensen, thank you. A quick commercial break as we wait, await results in the close ridings of Southdale, McPhillips, and the Maples. You're watching Decision Manitoba. Closed captioning for this global program is brought to you in part by Bathfitter, the beautiful bathroom of your dreams in just one day. If you wear hearing aids, Bluetooth technology can dramatically improve your quality of life. With the touch of an app on your smartphone, you'll never misplace your hearing aids again. Bluetooth technology lets you discreetly adjust the volume on one or both hearing aids. And no matter how lively the background noise, you'll always hear clearly. Hi, I'm Leslie Holden. Visit our team at the Polo Park Hearing Centre. Discover the difference that Bluetooth technology can make and live your life to the fullest. It's the Brick's famous tent sale. Get up to 60% off clearance items in the tents. Plus, get this modern sofa just $3.99. Or this family-sized glass shelf fridge, now only $4.99. The Brick's famous tent sale. Saving you more. Have you not tried the Beyond Meat Burger yet? I haven't. All right, here you go. One for each of you. Mm. That's a good flavor. This is actually unbelievably good. Right now, they're just $3.99. Oh, that's a great deal. Now what's your excuse? I don't have one now. Yeah, you don't have an Especially excuse? Especially $3.99, I mean. My dad started independent jewelers back in 1937, and I think he'd be very proud if he knew that his grandsons are now in charge of looking after this habitat build. I think, you know, in this area is an area where comfort is needed, and I think homes provide that. This is a way where our staff and our, our community interacts with this community in a little different way than normal. It's just nice to be able to be a part of that. Shaw Blue Curve. Your Wi-Fi, your rules. Pause Wi-Fi by device. Pause this, but not this. Put your Wi-Fi on a schedule to make dinner time, dinner time again. Set a Wi-Fi time limit to balance screen time with quality time. Take control of your Wi-Fi. Shaw Blue Curve. Jeep Wrangler is here. Jeep Compass is too. Jeep Cherokee and Grand Cherokee, they're all here. At the Jeep All Out Clear Out event, get into a Jeep Wrangler, Motor Trends 2019 SUV of the Year, or Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most luxurious vehicle in its class. It's no ordinary SUV. Jeep All Out Clear Out, on now. Get up to 15% off MSRP for up to $9,650 in total discounts. We've all been here before, gonna put our best foot forward, come on through the door, oh, take my hand, I'll show you the way. 
Get more done with all day battery life on this 15 inch Chromebook from Best Buy. Can't afford to bring all seven of you back. Welcome back. Let's check in one more time with Julie Buckingham standing by with our panel. Let's start to my left, Hal Anderson, final thoughts. You know what, Julie, I'll just say this impressive victory for the Tories tonight. Um, and what has happened over the past three years, not necessarily a roadmap to re-election, but it happened. And I think there was a lot of courage shown by uh, Premier Pallister. The things he did, not necessarily popular, but I think necessary in the province. Shannon Sanford. I think Bob Canoe did a fine job in maintaining the status quo. Premier pa Pallister, congratulations, job well done. And we get to do this all again tomorrow morning federally, and I yeah. cannot wait. <laughs> Jenny Makala. Congratulations again, obviously, Brian Pallister. But to come out with nearly 50% of the popular vote again is a resounding mandate. Yeah. Notwithstanding, you know, Wab Canoe's, you know, jubilant concession speech. I don't think it was a great night for the NDP, and I think that we've shown that Manitoba is, you know, looking forward to all of the things that Brian Pallister has promised in his mandate. Yeah. So we've had Decision Manitoba 2019. Now we get set for a federal election. But first, back to the desk. All right, Julie, thanks so much for your work down there tonight and to the entire panel. Uh, one more stop with Eric Sorensen. He's standing by as we wrap things up. Hey, Eric. 52. Hey, Lisa, you know, I think one thing that does give, I think, everyone pause is the voter turnout. You've talked a little bit about that uh, earlier. We don't have the final numbers in, but it's beginning to look like the voter turnout may be down very close to 50 percent. That would be an historic low in modern Manitoba political history. So we'll have to see how those numbers come. But running, have, having this campaign as it ran late in the summer after only three years, it's possible I heard a chant that said three more years at the Conservative headquarters. But let's look then at what the final standings look like in our virtual uh, legislature. Uh, and you can see it's not that different. It's a pretty good showing for the NDP. They've bumped their numbers up by about 50 percent. The Liberals have to be disappointed that they only get three and they won't have official party status sitting back there in those back benches. But of course, the Conservatives have a very healthy majority. So it's a very good night for Brian Pallister and the Progressive Conservatives. Lisa. Eric, thanks so much tonight for that tonight. Eric Sorensen reporting there. Now let's go to the big picture, our gains and losses board. Make sense of these numbers for everybody before we head out tonight, guys. The Progressive Conservatives leading and elected in 36, still a historic night. The NDP in 18, the Liberals in three. This is one of those situations where it's more like uh, the Manitoba we're used to when it comes to these three major political parties. Disappointing wow. night for the Liberals losing party staff. Yeah, disappointing night for the Green Party as well. And a quick look at the popular vote, David Aiken. That's right. And of course, Eric just ran through this and 49%, almost 50%, as our panel was just saying, that is terrific for the PCs. 31% for the NDP, Liberals unhappy at 14, and the Greens, again, I'm just saying, Manitobas are just not where the rest of the country is and getting excited about the Greens. At this but point overall time. turnout, though, just around 50% though. Overall turnout is projected to be 52%, but we'll have to wait for the final tally from Elections Manitoba. So off, not as much off, but certainly a bit off from 2016. All right. Now, while this election has finished up here in Manitoba, another one is just about to get underway. Tune in tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for special coverage of the federal writ drop. Donna Friesen will be joined by David Aiken as we look ahead to Decision Canada. And Quick turnaround. I'm just going to sleep under the desk and get up and we're into the federal election. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Thanks for being with us, everybody.